What's up? What's going on? Saturday. What's going on? What up? What up? What up? What up? Yo, what's going on Saturday night? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Yo, what's good? Saturday. The Saturday beanbag. The beanbag bash. What up? Yo, what's going on? Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, what's going on? What up? Hello, everyone. How you doing? What's up? Happy Saturday. What's up, Corn Pops? What's up, Beanbags? What's good? What's good? What's good? Yo, what up? What up? What up, Shlomo? What up, Jen? What's going on? Yo, what's up? How you doing, Melissa? What's up? Hey, Marcy. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What up? Acquittal. Too legit. Too legit. Got the acquit. Everybody is winning over here. It's, it's baseball. It's baseball game. Nobody saw this one coming. Who could have possibly? Who could have possibly seen Denial the Rising above this one? Uh, probably just every person that exists on Earth. Who even cares? What up? What's going on, Katie? What up? What up, everyone? Saturday night. What's really good? The beanbag bash is as it were. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for being involved. I figured I would come on and have a couple of have a few chats about a few things I've been thinking about today in this uh, in this day of in this day of beanbaggery. Jason said I I helped you I inspired you to move to Florida. That's what's up. Hell yeah! Welcome welcome to Big Flow, Big Ron's Kingdom. Joey Meatballs. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's right. Florida's a good time. Florida's open. It's live. We're living the dream here. We're living a free life. Everybody is free. It's a ball game. It's it's Big Ron's Kingdom. It's it's Ron. Big Ron is the Sultan of our Florida Dominion. He kills it. I'm not drunk enough for this. All right, all right. Go grab a go grab a pop there, beanbag. It was it was a day of beanbaggery indeed. And I hope that I hope that everybody. I think it's more than I think it's more than obvious that. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Snoopy. That's what's up. I think that it's more than obvious that um, that this was gonna go down this way. It's being it's being baggery. It's being ba it's it's Bobby Beanbags. It's being Bagwell. These clowns are wasting our time. They're wasting our GD time, Pop. They're, 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 like the whole thing. It's it's like a it's like a Broadway show. These people are clown sneakers. They're the sneakers of a literal clown. They're the sneakers of several clowns. They're they're dirty clown shoes. They're the dirtiest and filthiest of all clown shoes. The whole thing's a charade, and it's like the whole world's on fire. Everybody's in a bag of donuts. We're living in bean. We're living on beanbag planet. We got. We all have a front row seat for the beanbag show. And these clowns are like, my daughter won't come to the capital anymore. It's like, dog, your daughter's 24 years old. Like she should be fine. Like everybody's gonna be fine. Just take it easy, Pop. Just cool your jets there, beanbag. You emotional cheese wheel. Like roll yourself, roll yourself back to reality, Pop. <laughs> my, my daughter. Ah, ah, ah. It's like, dog, you should be more mad that they didn't put fucking protection around the building, you fucking jabroni. It's like, if these people were really that concerned, you knew fuck, you knew, you knew millions of people were going to be there. The guy literally said months in advance, like, it's going to be wild. Like, you would say if you were about to have a party, like, it's going to be wild. Be there. So people come, right? You'd be like, it's going to be wild. So they knew there was going to be millions of people there. They knew what was going to happen, and there's there's sixteen there's sixteen guys there to protect this. The most. Like we have a seven hundred billion dollar a year military budget budget. We have the most expensive the most expensive security system, the most advanced security system that the world has ever known. And there's uh, twenty there's twenty people there. Like come on, Bob. Like what are we doing? I mean, how obvious does it have to be? How obvious does it have to be? It's just like, oh, oh my God, there's 23 people here. It's like, yo, did you, if anybody watched the videos of what went on, they're like walking around in there. They're like holding the cell phone. The guy's 63 years old. Like, yeah, there was a couple jabrons in there and I'm not endorsing their behavior. And I'm not saying that violence is a behavior, obviously. I'm not suggesting that that's the case. And obviously the going inside is very bad. Like everybody can understand that. But let's not, let's, let's not, let's not let our emotions get in the way. It's like, if you can, if you can get, and people, I saw today, I saw someone that I follow on the gram posted something that was like, it was something to the effect of this. It was like, it was like, 
only in America could more than half of the people vote for something and it not go through. And it's like, dog, if you think that this guy deserves to be prosecuted just for saying what he actually said, you think that he deserves to be prosecuted for that? Imagine, imagine how many people on the left would have to go to prison! How many, how many men of them would have to go to fucking straight up be subject to these same exact rules? I just hope that everybody understands that this is absolutely nothing short of hypocrisy in, in, in the absolute most full and obvious form. It is pure hypocrisy. It's a clown show. It's a jabron show. It's a hot brown in your cereal show. It's like, it's like Cuomo, it's like Cuomo on stage. It's like the Cuomo show. It's just like, if you could put this whole thing into a, into a big, into a big nipple bar, it would be Cuomo. It would be the dehydrated who. It would be like the who from Whoville. It would be a trash, it would be a trash fire. It would be a trash fire in New York and at 10 p.m. they'd be like, you gotta shut down. It's like, duh. What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, the clap does not go away at 10, you jabron. Like, it's freaking, like, in, in Florida, in Big Rod's Kingdom, in Big Freedom, in Big Moisture Land, you could go to a bar and sit at the bar, humans. You could go sit at the bar next to a human being with your, with your, with no diaper, and you could just be like, hey, how you doing? Do you have a great day today? And they're like, yeah, I'm having a great day. And it's like, super spreader, super spreader event. These people are full of bull, there's a full malarkey pop. It's a, it's a charade. It's a show. And on top of all that, there's like people suffering around the world. There was like this kid in Texas, a 12 year old kid I saw in the news the other day. This 12 year old kid hung himself, committed suicide from, from, being, from all this clam dem. It's like these people are in there talking about Donnie trying to impeach a person that's not even in office. Like, dog, we have other problems in, at, at stake. And I think what, what I just hope that people understand from all this, and I hope what people see, which I think is obviously clear to us and, and, and visible to us because we're here on earth and we're sentient beings with half of a brain we have one 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 ojo on the truth and the other ojo into a into a into a garbage pile but it's more than obvious that these people do not care about us they don't care about us they haven't cared about us they don't care about us they don't care about anything other than one thing only one thing only the only thing that they care about is enriching themselves and elevating their social status and their socioeconomic status in the government structure that is their only interest they are completely self-motivated all the way through and through the vast majority of them probably not every single one of them but the vast majority of them the only thing that they care about is getting further up their rank getting higher up into the throes of power and then using that power to escape any to, to escape anybody looking in their direction they don't care about us these people these people do not being a public servant a public servant is not a high paying job what do you think that they're doing in there why do you think they pay 25 million dollars to get a senate seat and they're not doing that because they want because they want to be a servant that's a that's Gibran city it's clear as day and that's the thing it's like i just wish that more people were aware of how obvious this is it's so obvious and it's just like the fact that people don't see that is so insane. It's like, yo, are we are we both are we both using our ojos and like looking at this? Like, what are we doing, Bob? Like, what in the freaking what in the corn tamale are we looking at? And they're like, oh my god, no, 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 this is bad. It's like, dog. The, Every single thing that they do is the absolute worst. The absolute worst. It's complete trash. And you better believe, you better believe they're going to push this $15 minimum wage through. <laughs> yo, oh, yo, look at what take a take a freaking take an inventory of the price of a of a paper towel roll right now. Oh, it's like remember back in 2021 when paper towels were cheap? And it'll be in 2025 and you'd be like, "Oh, let me buy a paper towel." Oh, it's $39. Like, "Oh, cool. Like, let me mortgage my house." Let me fucking take a second mortgage out so I can buy these paper towels so I can clean up this <laughs> so I can clean up this dump that my fucking uh, that my child left on the ground because they because they got a they got a fucking uh, a participation trophy for existing at school. They went to school and sat in a cubicle and fucking don't talk to Jimmy, don't talk to Jane, just sit in your cubicle with your diaper and fucking die. And we're not going to teach you shit. Because you're living in, a, in an indoctrination zone. Oh, you're white? That's illegal now. You can't. Oh, you need to recognize your privilege, you chooch. Oh, what are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you, what are you being not racist? Well, I'm gonna push race right into your anus because you're just a young impressionable child that needs to learn that the world is a very bad, very evil, very racist, oppressive place. And if you don't acknowledge, like, shut the front door. Like you're a literal garbage tamale that you're like, like that we're all just cooking. Like we're all, it's, it's on low simmer and everyone's just like, I can't wait for the tamale. Like, 
don't, I don't want to eat that. Like, everything is trash. Like, I don't want your garbage tamale. And they're like, don't you want it? And they're like, well, if we burn down everything around you and there's nothing to eat but a garbage tamale, like, you're eating the tamale. And they're just like, no, ah, like, no. Is it like, I'm fucking, yo, I hate everything. Every single thing on the planet is hot garbage. Yo, so I'm like, I'm at the gymnasium earlier because I can go there without a diaper on. And if I did have to wear a diaper, I would just jump off of a bridge head first onto a concrete, concrete sidewalk. But whatever, I digress because I live in Big Ron's Freedom Zone. Any whom, any whom, I'm at the gym and there's like a thousand TVs, one billion TVs are on. It's February, tw it's February 13th, chooch. You know what's on those TVs every single time without fail that I go to the gym? You know what's on those TVs? It's a fucking guy with a flag on a pole, like, like spearing it at the Capitol. And then it's like a guy like, like shaking a fence. <laughs> It's like, and it's like, I'm not laughing at the fence. It's just like, dog, it's been like, it's been like 50 days. Like, stop. They are so full of shit. They're so full of shit. They're full of shit. They're like, yo, let's play this on loop a thousand times. It's like, fam, fam, like you're a literal merchant of trash. Like I'm walking up to the counter and they're like, we have trash. We have trash on rice. We have a bowl of trash. If you want extra trash, that'll be $2 extra. Do you want guac on that trash? And it's like, yeah, like give me the guac. The guac is actually made of trash as well. And it's like, dope, sick. Like I want, like give, give me a bowl. Like, do you guys have, like, do you have, like, can I take it to go? Like, do you have, like, can I have a straw? No, you can't have a straw. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, it's because the turtles. Meanwhile, we're throwing a thousand diapers a day, like, just into the ocean. People are just, like, at their house. They, like, take the mask off and they ball it up and just Kobe, just fucking Kobe their face diaper into the ocean. And, like, a turtle is just like, oh, God. Like, a, or the turtle just dies immediately. And they're like, the environment. It's like, the turtles are just like, bro, there's masks everywhere. I don't know how turtles swim. They're just like, masks? Masks? Like, pop. They just eat masks? It's great. Oh, put on two diapers now. Oh, dope. Like, the turtles are just like, stop. Like, the turtles have lived for 200 years, and we're just like, diaper, diaper. Like, we walk by a river, and we just throw the diaper into the fucking river. Like, eat that. Thanks, 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 nature. I'm going to go drive my electric car now. The turtles are just like, no. It's like, don't worry, I have a Prius. I, I, I have a Prius, don't worry. Don't worry, I charged, don't worry, I charged my, I charged my car at the house with fucking coal. I, I used a coal power plant to charge my electric car. I'm, I'm, I'm helping. I'm helping. It's like, dog, you're a chooch on parade. Like, what are you doing? Like, literally, what are you doing? Do you even understand the basic fundamentals of where electricity comes from? Nope. Sure don't. Okay, cool. I'm getting hot in here. I'm getting hot. Get, getting, I'm heating up. Whew, gotta take a, gotta take a <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christmas! Whoa! I have a Prius. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so sorry, I didn't, re I didn't realize. It's like I like I have privilege, and I also have a Prius. But fuck the turtles. But don't worry, because I used a coal power plant to charge my Prius. Dope. That's cool. Great. Good job. <sighs> Holy beanbag! Oof! Got a little. <laughs> Got a little heated up there. Got a little, got a little cooking. Got everything cooking there. Yo, just, just a heads up to all you, all you Gibrons out there. I see people buying these badges. I just got the ability to turn these badges on. Thank you guys so much for buying these badges. I don't even know what that is. I like I, this is the first time with the badges. I'm sorry that I haven't seen who bought the badges, but I see eight badges. So whoever's got a badge, fucking hell yeah, pop. You're, you're like yeah, like go America. Like thank you for the badges. You guys are the best. I don't know what that means. Is it a celebration? It's like, I have a badge. I don't know, but like whatever you're doing to the eight people that bought badges, like hell yeah, beanbag. Like you're like, you're an actual food tamale. It's not a garbage tamale. So I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, the world is trash. Um, anyways, someone, somebody will inevitably slide into my DMs and be like, yo, the oldest guy made $19. <laughs> it's like, He's not, he's, he's not trusting the plan, bro. This guy's a, it's like, it's like, dog, I'm sweating. Like, I'm literally sweating. Like, this is physical labor. Like, I'm digging a hole. Like, you guys can't see, but I'm shoveling a hole underneath this desk right now. Like, I'm literally shoveling. Like, I am currently shoveling dirt. Like, I'm, this is my job. Like, I'm at work right now. <laughs> like, I'm toiling. I'm toiling. I'm currently toiling. Holy Christmas. This guy's, this guy's a chooch. <laughs> Badges, pyramids, the plan, Pompeo, Pompeo from a Black Hawk. Yo. So, 
Okay, so we've established we've established that we're witnessing absolutely nothing short of political theater. It's more than obvious. Everybody's watching it. We're like, I was like, yeah, Donnie got acquitted. And they're like, Mitch McConnell's like, ma, we still could be a subject to criminal, criminal. It's like, dog, shut up. Just shut the hell up. Like, how about you asshats start doing something that actually matters to the people that are currently residing on plan on the planet of Earth. Like, currently on planet Earth, people give a shit about things that, um, I don't know, aren't this, you chooch. Like, no one cares. Like, literally zero people care. Except for Ocrazio and the 14 people that follow her that understand how, how, the, how the English language and how Earth works. And then there's 10,000 people that are like, oh my god, but that's okay. Like, we don't need to, we don't need to cater to these jabrones. Like, these are jabrones. And then you just have all these super, super hyper unaware people being like, oh my God, this is a good day for democracy. We need unity. We need unity. Yeah, nothing says unity like like James and the Giant peaching a guy that's not even in the office. Like, not even in there. Not even there. He's gone. He's not even there. He's playing golf. He's on the ninth tee. He's shooting a putt. He got two over par. And they're like, unity. We need unity by pummeling this down everybody's throat and saying that every single person in the nation that disagrees with us is a racist, xenophobic, sexist, resurrectionist, fucking jambalaya sandwich with garbage inside, with, with tr uh, trash merchant of the highest order. Like, everything is trash, the world is garbage. It's like, oh, unity, unity, we need unity. It's like, dog, is that really what you want, is unity? Like, I don't think that's what you want, cornmeal. I think you're lying. Yo, I have this, this desk stands up, so I'm gonna stand up. Maybe it'll give me a, maybe it'll, maybe it'll, maybe I won't sweat as much. I'm gonna lift this desk up. Do a little desk lift. I, maybe I'll make a habit of standing. That's kind of cool. Then I can like, I can fucking shuck and jump. I can work for my, then I can, I can really get the shovel deep into the dirt there, Pop. I surely get a better air conditioner in this room or something, or I'll just jump off a bridge. Oh man, it's so hot. It's so hot from screaming and yelling. <laughs> it's like, like somebody comes to the door and I'm drenched in sweat and they're like, what are you doing in there? I'm just yelling, I'm just yelling alone at my phone. <laughs> well, well, 125 people around the world are like, look at this jabron. Look at this sweaty corn, corn pop. Whatever. I'm gonna turn the AC down because I live in Florida. This room has this room doesn't have enough air vents, so that will literally do nothing. And then when I leave the live stream and go back into the living room, it'll be like a frigid hellscape, and I'll just be like, oh, like, like, or did libs come through here because they cooled it all off because they're fucking demons, <laughs> not libs, leftists, garbagios, trash merchants of the highest order. How you guys liking down the uh, the, the liking the standing? I'm liking it. I got the flops on. I'm having a pop. I'm having a corn pop. Yo. Yeah, yo, Joe. Yeah, mentioning anomaly. Yeah, anomaly stands. He's like, he's like I love this dude. He's like, he's like lifting a, he's like lifting a fucking uh, uh, uh what you call it? He has like a kettlebell, and he's like, he's like swinging the kettlebell and like lifting the kettlebell. I love that. I should start doing that. I'll start doing jumping jacks. Do a couple J squareds for you guys. Just do a couple. J I do actually have. I do have this balance board that's like good for the, the old core there. You stand on the balance board and it like forces you to stay erect or whatever. Stay fucking whatever. Maybe that'll help me that maybe that'll help me lean into the into the trash a little bit more. Maybe it'll help me lock in. Um anyways, I digress. So anyways. So so these like so we it's this is the thing. This is what I don't understand. This is what I can't seem to wrap my head around. Is like so you know, like, you know that this is a charade. Everybody knew ahead of time, anybody that's been paying attention is more than aware that this, that this trial, this trial, this freaking, this, this, this circus, as it were, circus, circus, <laughs> I don't know, this circus, 
is not going to result in any conviction. So it was just these clowns just parading up there and crying and stuff. And the thing that really, the real, the thing that really just like puts my beanbag in a vice and just gives it like puts it right before the place of pop, and then it's just like, nah, right, you could go. Is when that when Eric Swalwell got on the stand. It's like what. That's like OJ testifying in a murder trial, somebody else's murder trial, and then just like raining down blood. That's like OJ being the prosecution in somebody else's murder trial. <laughs> You're like, well, you wrote a book that said if you did it. I mean, uh, it's like, Doug, Swalwell? That's the guy? Swalwell? Like, what? What? That's Swalwell? Like, are you joshing? Like, are you are you climbing up the Joshua tree? Like, do you currently live in the Joshua tree? Like, did you and Cuomo build a nest in Joshua tree? Because that's insanity, cornmeal. Like, what are you doing? Like, who gave birdseed to these jabrones? Because they look fat and happy. This is trash. Swallow. This is insane. It's like, dog, dog, weren't you clipping someone from, like, what? Like, 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 we're, I'm just like doing one of these jobs. Like I'm doing a 360 and I'm just like, excuse me. Like what? Excuse me. I thought Swallow, like, like what? Like I thought Swallow was unemployed. Like, isn't this guy supposed to be unemployed? Like the guy's on the, he's on like the, the intelligence committee. They're like, give this guy the, like, give this guy the main line to the fucking, to the secret intel. It's like, I thought that was like treason. Like, what is this guy doing? And he's like, no, no, no. It's like, I don't even watch him because I'm not going to give this guy my attention. But I saw him on the TV at the gym as they played on 24 hour, hour, hour cycle. And I'm like, what? It's just like, this is trash. They're like, these people are so full of shit. They're so full of shit. And it's just like, it's so remarkable because they've managed to convince the like a huge majority of super woke people that this is good. It's like, yo, who's out there just like, yeah, let me vote away my freedom. Let me vote for higher taxes. How about let's do higher taxes, less freedom, censor everybody, censor everything, like remove the leader of the free world from the ability to communicate to the people. Say that you're committing a crime for speaking words. For speaking human words, like Bob, like you're literally, like you're using, you're literally blowing, uh, like oxygen out of your mouth hole, and they're just like prison. It's like what? Isn't that the first amendment? Like what? Like isn't that in the Constitution? They're just like, oh, the Constitution's racist, xenophobic, sexist. Like it's like what? Like what? Like what do you mean? Like, what? what's her guts? What's her face? The, the, that fucking, oh my God. You, com comedy is illegal. I can't even say what I want to say. Like, I literally can't even make the jokes that I want to make because of risk of being fucking deleted from this hellscape. Oh, you don't get, you're going to get your badges taken away. You fucking, don't be funny. Like, keep it, like, like, make everything PC. Send it through a filter. It's like, ah, fucking hell. It's like uh, comedy now is like is like <laughs> is like pouring fucking it's like it's like dumping water into like a diaper and then just collecting the water that comes through the diaper. Like it has to soak forever and then you get like a drop. Like all the funny stuff that you poured in like unless you buy Huggies in which case nothing comes through. It's like a cheap diaper. It's like a dollar store diaper and the just a drop comes through and you're like, "Ah, uh -huh. no, is that funny?" No. Okay, cool. Like let me just let me just go back to the drawing board in my anus and see if I can come up with something that's funny instead of saying the actual thing that I want to say. Dope. That's cool. And then if I save it and post it up to my story and put it on YouTube they'll be like oh, hate speech it's like what is that oh you can't like I can't make jokes like what if I call myself a chooch they're like that's hate speech like you're hating on yourself it's like okay it's like what is that a blue shirt you look like a chooch it's like oh, oh like somebody reported you for talking about you like that's the world we're coming to like this guy made fun of himself calls him shut him down it's like oh, no like I hate everything like literally living on earth is garbage not saying that there's anywhere better, just saying it's trash. But anyways, as I went into that long, just <laughs> like that long fucking, I can't say anything. I wanted to say boogaloo, but apparently I literally didn't know what boogaloo meant. I just meant, I just, I was like literally online just like boogaloo. Cause I called like the other day I was, I was like on the live stream and I'm like Bobby's beanbag boogaloo. Like I was literally thinking of words that just started with B. And I go online and typed in Boogaloo and it's like extreme right 
slang for Civil War or something. I was like, what? So I can't say boo. Like, I don't even want to say it. I hate everything. Like, I literally can't even say words. Like, I'm about to just start making up words. Like, Boo Radley. In the, like, I'm in Boo Radley's tree with Cuomo. Like, me and Boo Radley are in the tree with Cuomo. Like, we're going to the courthouse. Everything is trash. Did he just reference... <laughs> Did he just make a book reference to a book that you were supposed to read in high school that he only read two, two chapters so he could pass the freaking quiz and cheat on it or whatever? Did you read the cliff notes? Because I did. Anyways, what I was saying, what I was trying to say before I got so rudely interrupted by everything allow, allowed on the, in the world, everything not allowed, is what I was going to say is Maxine Waters... Oh, God. I wish I, could, I wish I could come up... I wish I could come up with a better nickname than Maxine Waters. It's like, what's the filthiest thing that's not water? Maxine Garbles? Maxine Garbles? <laughs> uh, I'll work on it. I'll work on coming up with something. But, like, I had a joke, but, like, I can't say it. I can't say it. This woman's 82. Like, retire! Like, retire! But anyways, she was on... She... She was on TV, or she was at that thing, she had the microphone, and she was like, Tell them that they're not welcome here! You cause a scene! It's like, this lady literally said, like, cause a scene, come up to him at a gas station, like, come and cause a scene. And Donnie's like, peacefully walk down the street, and they're just like, prison! It's like, dude, the hypocrisy of these people is insanity. Insanity. Absolutely insanity. Light Harrell. Trash. And the thing that's so amazing about it all is like the audacity. The audacity. The hypocrisy. It's so obvious. You just go online and just type in like leftist hypocrisy. There's like a thousand videos about it. Anomaly posted an awesome video today about the hypocrisy and it's like yeah, and like anybody that actually pays attention, anybody that watches the hypocrisy play out in real time is like, yo, like, no, like, <laughs> like everybody wants to bash their skull through a literal like, brick wall. That's how I even got here in the first place. That's how, that's, that's how and why I'm here on Saturday night doing the beanbag bash, collecting badges at the beanbag bash, the badge beanbag bash. That's why I'm here, because I just, like, one day I was sitting at my desk, working like a, like a good American citizen, and I was like, yo, wait, what? Did, did Billy the Diddler, did Billy the Diddler just suggest that Denald Ballpark is not fit for office because of his what? Billy the Diddler? The Diddler? Is that, 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 as he, as he freaking... Yo, what? Like, like, yo, diddler. Maybe, maybe, maybe hang it up a little bit. Maybe take a, maybe, maybe escape from the scene, dog. Like, we saw you on Epstein's plane, pop. We saw you in the water there. We know what you did, you, you jabron. Up, up. Watch out, guys. I'm gonna get suicided. Here we go. Whatever. But it's like Billy the Diddler saying that Donnie Ballpark was not fit for office is rhetoric. It's like, dog, you caught a blowy under your desk by an intern like maybe you should um i don't know never speak about anything like that again diddler like get your fucking act together you jabron like pardon me excuse me dude like excuse excuse charleston choose like shut the hell up dude like you are literally full of garbaggio he doesn't he doesn't have the demeanor it's like what Again, like, it's like, I can't even think of an example more hilarious than Bill Clinton saying that. It's like, what? That's like the funniest thing that it could be. Like, I'm trying to find another thing that would be equivalently as funny, and there isn't anything, because it's the most ridiculous thing. It's just like, what? What do you mean, bro? Like, what are you talking about? Like, literally, what are you talking about? It's like, yo, I have no self-awareness. Like, catch you on the, catch you on the Lolita Express. Okay. I was there for business. Me and Jeff, me and Jeff just went to Africa to fucking, okay. I wonder what happened there, Diddler. Uh-oh, I better, uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's getting dicey. <laughs> Look at half the, half the lives just like, Meow. all the badges disappear. The, 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 the money's just like, Meow. it's like, get this clown. <laughs> These are jokes, you freaking chooches. 
It's like uh, joking is not allowed. Com comedy is no longer allowed here on the planet of Earth. <laughs> Fit in our tight little box where we make you do and say exactly as we want. Yo, I wouldn't be getting people wouldn't be scooping up badges if these chooches actually had something funny to say. No, absolutely nobody, absolutely nobody that follows a leftist ideology is you know, funny like to any stretch of the imagination. Like, it's just, it is laughable. Literally laughable. Yo, I see these pinks. Is that the badges? The people that have the pink hearts? If that's the case, that's fucking awesome. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much. That's awesome. These ba I don't know how these badges work. I don't know what to hit. It says a button that says view. I don't want to mess with it. I feel like it's gonna, my phone's going to implode. The house is going to set on fire. Maxine Waters is going to be in front of my house with a gas pump. Like, you make a scene! It's like, you're ugly and old. Like, what do you mean? Oh, I can't even say that. Oh, God, this is live. Oh, no. Uh, is that like, a, am I going to pass the, you, can you say that? Are you allowed to say that? It's like, ah, God, I hate everything. Like, I think, like, it is so difficult to be funny when you freaking, when you can't say the thing that makes you funny, the thing that would be the funniest, like, you literally can't say that. It's just like, dog, I hate everything. Michelle, thank you so much. Michelle bought a badge. Cool, that's how cool as fuck. Yo, Teresa bought it. Hell yeah, yo, people getting these badges going. That's what's up, thank you. Yo, I'm exhausted. I've been carrying around these eyebrows all day. That's a joke I stole from Brett Ernst. If you ever heard of Brett Ernst, give him a goog. <laughs> the first, the first, uh, the first comedy I ever saw from him, uh, he came out and he had eyebrows just like this. And he came out and he was like, he's like, how you guys doing? I'm exhausted. I've been carrying around these eyebrows all day. And I was like, hell! I was like, yo, I'm a fan for life. I was like, that's. I thought it was the funniest thing. I was like, that's fucking priceless. So I totally just stole that from him. But give him a check. Check him out. His name is Brett Ernst. B-R-E-T-E-R-N-S-T. -E 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 Brett Ernst. He's the man. Super funny. Fucking Jersey Guido. <laughs> I've been carrying around these eyebrows all day. Oh my god. Anyways, I digress. Somebody said the other day, they were like, I forget who said it, but somebody was like, your eyebrows look like an apostrophe. I was like, all right. I was like, I guess, I guess my face is in quotes. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a joke prepared for that, but somebody did say that the other day. My mom loves you. Thank you. That's awesome. Trust the brows. <laughs> oh God, yo, I did get a DM uh, yesterday of like a like a probably like woman in her sixties or so, and it was like a picture of her holding up a shirt and a cup and a what in the freedom cup and like a fax or trash shirt or something. And, uh, and it was like, my daughter just gave these to me for my birthday. And I was like, yo, hell yeah. Like <laughs> intergenerational Sosalado, like intergenerational Sosalado, like bringing families together since 2020. Sosalado, Sosalado, Salado is for the family. Salado is for the kids. Like Sosalado is literally for the entire fam. Like multi-generational Sosalados. That's great. I love that. It's so great to hear. <laughs> it's, 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 it brings the people together. <laughs> What a great time to be living on Earth. It's like, why does everything have to be so trashy and also great at the same time? It's like, what a what a trash what a trashy lifestyle. But whatever. Thank you, Ryan, for the badge that stuff. Trust the brow. <laughs> Yo, if anybody wants to trust the brow t-shirt, send me an email. Woke at Bobby Sausalito.com. <laughs> Holy hell. You should make an eyebrow shirt. People literally said it right at the same time. They probably didn't hear me say it, and then that came out. So yeah, if anybody wants an eyebrow shirt, send me an email, woke at bobbysaucelito.com, and be like, yo, give me a brow shirt, and I'll make one. <laughs> My daughter introduced me to your world. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's absolutely trash, but it's magical. Yes. That's so cool. So if you buy a badge every single time you make a comment, you got these pink stars. That's so awesome. So I can see the people that really care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Michelle's got three hearts. Holly's got two hearts. We've got a little competition in here. Tanya's got some hearts now. You got three hearts. She's got two hearts. Why does everybody not have three? Can anybody get four? How do you get five? I don't even, I, I like, I literally don't know how these badges really work, but I do like the healthy competition of, of how many hearts one can accumulate. I don't know how they work, but I know that I have 21 of them. 21 badges have been sold, so thank you guys so much for the support. Appreciate it. I'll get, I'll get better with them, and I'll try to figure out what they mean. I see there's three, I see there's two, I see some are purple, some are red, I don't know what it means. The salad dough, I don't know, like I'm doing the best I can. But thank you so much. Um, oh, three max. Bobby Auctioneer, who can get a heart? I can get a heart. Everybody gets a car. Maxine Waters hates you. 
Everything is trash. You can have one to three. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, that's what's up. Yeah. You get giddy up. It's like getting the rose. <laughs> cool. That's what's up. So, all right. So you have, so you have this absolute charade that's going on in DC, and then you have all of these literal Gibrons on TV parading around, and it's just like, yo. Is anybody, has anybody checked the cases lately? Has anybody checked the deaths lately? Has anybody like literally looked at what's actually going on? The other day I made a, I mentioned in my video that the U, that UC Berkeley, the University of California at Berkeley, Berkeley, which is widely known for being like one of the most woke colleges on the planet of earth, said that it locked 2000 students in the room. They're not allowed to, they're not allowed to leave their room. Like what? Like, meanwhile, here in Florida, like, I can literally go down the street and, like, have a cold pop and, like, look somebody in the eye and just be like, what up, fam? Like, I can, like, I can hard, I can hot breath in their eye. And, like, I'm not saying that that's what's going on, and I'm also not trying to put a target on, on Florida, and I'm sure that there's some super woke people that are going to be like, you see? Florida! Like, super spread. Like, meanwhile, all of our cases are down, our deaths are down, like, we're literally doing better than 20 other states or 28 other states. It's just like, meanwhile, we haven't had any of those same restrictions as all these chooches. It's like, the numbers don't reflect the true nature of what's going on. And then they try to tell you, like, oh, like, the flu went away. It's like, fuck. Like, dude, dude. And, and then what's so mind-blowing about all this is that in California, uh, what's, his, what's his guts? Uh, Freaking... Freaking, freaking chooch on parade! The chooch, the clown, the clown car of all clown cars, the clown car of a human being, the 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 empty shell of a man that goes on TikTok and plays hip hop and watching him walking with his, with his he's got his boots. He ah, I have boots. Me, like here's a tree. Me and Krusty are pointing at a tree. This clown, 1.5 million signatures were signed to get Gavin Mussolini out of office, which is hilarious because he's trash and everyone obviously doesn't like him. Yet on TV, they're like, they're like <laughs> these far extreme, these extremist groups got 1.5 million extremist. Like, what are you talking about? It's an extremist. Yo, the media is so full of malarkey. It's just mind blowing. It absolutely blows my mind that anybody could actually endorse this stuff and celebrate Mussolini. Like, what are you doing? How insanely unaware people are to what's actually going on. It is tragic. If you're watching the mainstream news as your source of information in 2021, you are clueless, Pop. I don't care which side of the political or whatever, ideological or just like living on earth homo sapien sapien spectrum you're looking at if you're looking at television and being like all right i got my download for the day you're absolutely clueless clueless what's so sad too is that like all these people and i've said this before is people these people that work at these news organizations are employed these are employees they are signing the back of a paycheck from some jabron that's making more money than they're paying them and if you know that anderson pooper and all of these clowns like don lamont the most horrible person ever this guy is a huge total clown shoe like 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 a picture like a picture a clown shoe picture like a large red shoe with like spit from like kids on it they spit on it they came up and they're like ah clown they poked him he squirted water from a flower it's just like a big like really like scuffed sh clown shoe and like that's lamont like don lamont is a clown's shoe chris cuomo is the shoe of a clown like a literal clown shoe these people are the shoes of clowns. Not even, and not just a clown, a, a, like, a, like a really hard working clown that's like in the union, like a union clown that's been clowning since clowning's been clowning. Like, like one of those clowns that like, you go to the locker room, like the clown locker room, and he's like, duh, like, he's like, bro, I can't take it. Like that guy, like that guy. The clown that's like exhausted. Like the clown whose name is like an old clown. Like it's an old clown name that like no one even uses anymore. Like an old clown name. <laughs> I'm gonna Google that. I'm gonna give that a gal. Old clown name. Yo, that would be great. I wish I had the I wish I had the mental fortitude to just just hit you guys with an old clown name. Bozo! That's, that's what I was looking for. Bozo! Like imagine if you just like Bozo the Clown like if you if you were if you went to the Clown Hall of Fame and you saw Bozo the Clown's shoes, that's Chris Cuomo. 
Like the, like the quality of those shoes, like the polished new nature of those shoes, that's Cuomo. That's Chris Cuomo, that's, that's Andrew Cuomo, that's the Cuomo family em em embodied by a shoe. By, a, by like a, a rusty old, <laughs> that's the blown out shoe. A shoe that's in the clown, in the clown hall of fame. They're like, this was Bozo's shoe after he did 73 birthday parties in one weekend. It's like, <laughs> he did 73 back-to-back -back birthday parties. It's like, okay. <sighs> Clown shoe is the funniest thing. Thanks, Bo, Sea Wolfie. Thanks so much. Chris <laughs> Somebody said bubbles. That's a good one. <laughs> I just hit the, you know, that's so fun. like I hit the, I hit the gagal and I was like old clown names. And the article that came up says 10 famous clowns from comical to creepy. <laughs> Yo, Amy Tikkanen is like over at Britannica, just like, I'm going to write up this clown article. Creepiest clowns. Like imagine, imagine being at work and like before lunch, you're just like, sorry, I'll be at lunch, but like, I, like I'll meet you at Subway, but I got to finish this article on creepy clowns. <laughs> it's like, like, you, like find other employment. I don't know. Like this is, I don't know. I mean, you, these, like you have to do that. The world, you know, somebody's got to write this article. I get it. This one, this one, it talks about Oleg Popoff and it says he's the Tom Brady of clowns. <laughs> okay. All right. The Tom Brady of clowns, guys. Here we go. There's all these funny pictures of these clowns, like sad and tatters. These guys are scary. Ronald McDonald's on there. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, anyways, I digress. So, <laughs> insane clown bouncy is the squad. Yeah, large facts. Significantly sized fact. Like, fact me a letter, because that is absolutely accurate. Oh my god. Bozo's from Chicago. The clowns. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yo, 26 badges. Wow, thanks guys. Appreciate that. That's awesome. 26 badges. That's cool as hell. Um, so here's the other thing. Uh, now I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to connect all these dots. I'm gonna try to take one anus and connect it to the other anus, and we can just have a free flow of filth. So okay, so you have the complete you have a complete clown show operating in in DC. You have this you have this perpetual case that won't go away. They're still on Donnie. It's like what's gonna be on CNN this week? Like, what are they going to talk about on MSNBC? What is freaking, what is Rachel Maddow and Don Lamont going to talk about this week on CNBC? What are they going to talk about? And you know what else, what I find absolutely insane is they're going to have a, they're going to have a trial about GameStop this week. And they're going to be running through and making a public thing. It literally, it's like, if you just Google GameStop. The CEO of Reddit, Robinhood, and Roaring Kitty. Roaring Kitty is gonna testify on GameStop. It's like, bro, these people are not doing anything in our interest. People on Wall Street have been goosing, goosing the system since the beginning of time. And this is one time, one time that these jabrones, that, that these people got away with something. It's like, oh, get Roaring Kitty in here to testify. Like, fudge off, beanbags. Like, why is the CEO of Reddit going to be in a hearing? That dude had, doesn't have to be in a hearing. Reddit, is, Reddit has nothing to do with this. This is stupid. These people should be worrying about how we have people fucking dying and committing suicide and having opioid addiction and doing and having freaking and beating each other up and divorce rates are off the charts and and freaking and uh what's it called um murders are off the charts freaking violent homicides are off the charts robberies are off the charts carjackings are off the charts literally every possible thing that could be wrong imaginable in the country is wrong and they're like interviewing this fucking ceo of reddit who fucking cares about the CEO of Reddit. That has nothing to do with anything, you fucking losers. These people do not give a shit about anybody but themselves. This is a show. This is a fucking show. Sorry for, sorry for cursing, but like, fuck.
or whatever, or I'm not sorry, or I don't know, cancel me, or don't, or I don't know, everything's garbage. I'll take my, I'll take my 28 badges and I'll hit the bricks. <sighs> Earth is trash. Anyways. So they're gonna have the CEO of GameStop and the C, or the, they're gonna have the GameStop guy, they're gonna have the Hello Kitty, Roaring Kitty, they're gonna have the CEO of Robinhood. The CEO of Robinhood, yeah, great, that seems fine, but again, this is like, why are we paying attention to this? Why are you investing money in this? That will be a thing two months from now, three months from now, six months from now. Talk to the guy in three months. How about you figure out all the other shit that's wrong? How about you guys do all the other stuff that we're paying you for? These people are extracting more cash out of every American's pocket without them ever being aware of it. And they're just setting everybody up to get goosed. And here's the other thing. This is an unpopular opinion, especially with, uh, especially with internet, peoples of the internets. I hope that people understand what I think is one of the huge moral hazards of this whole Bitcoin debate. And look, I'm not gonna weigh in on Bitcoin. You, everyone wants to be like, Bitcoin is God's money. Like God made Satoshi. Satoshi Nakamoto took a dump and he took a picture of the dump. He flipped it upside down. He inverted it. He put it into a decoder. The decoder spit out Bitcoin. He made 21 million Bitcoins. And now everybody is jerking off to Bitcoin. Shut the fuck up. I'm just saying, this is what I think about Bitcoin. What I think is going to happen with Bitcoin, and you can mark my bean bags now, Corn Pop. Take a to get, take your take your hot brown, put your finger in it, and write yourself a note because this is what I think is going to happen. And I certainly hope it doesn't, but I'm pretty sure it's going to. Here's what's going to happen with Bitcoin, as predicted by Roberto Sassalado on 2 13 2021. Take it to the bank, cornmeal, because it doesn't matter anyways because I don't care. But I'm going to do the best I can to tell you what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. The Federal Reserve Bank runs the entire planet, right? U.S. dollar hegemony runs the planet. The, the people that own and operate the Federal Reserve Bank, the people that have high interest in the Federal Reserve Bank, they took, in, in 1971, Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard, which meant that physical cash, fiat currency, U.S. based fiat currency is not backed by gold, which means it's not backed by anything, which means it's literally nothing. It's just propped up by the U.S. government and backed by the U.S. government, which means a lot. Don't get me wrong. It means a lot. But what it also means is that they can print it out of thin air. They can just turn on the printer and print more of it. Turn on the printer, print more of it. Thank you, Ariana, for the Venmo. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I just saw that Venmo pop in. Thank you so much, Ariana. So they can turn on the printer and they can print it out, right? They can just print an unlimited amount of money. And you're going to lead me to believe, you're going to lead me, a sentient human, a homo sapien sapien, you're going to lead me to believe that Bitcoin, with no creator, with no owner, that uses more electricity than is, than is possible for everyone on the planet to actually even use it. A decentralized, no border currency of which no one knows where it came from, no one knows where it is, and it literally is nothing. And you're going to lead me to believe and lead all of these people to believe that this thing, this decentralized go currency in the middle of thin air that has absolutely nothing for nothing for nothing that's nothing more than somebody selling it to the greater fool you're gonna lead me to believe that this decentralized currency aka string of numbers on a freaking electrical grid that it can't even support that would use more electricity than the world even produces to run successfully you're gonna lead me to believe that this thing this single thing is going to shut off the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States Somewhere where they have a literal printer, where they can literally create infinite amounts of cash out of thin air that they've been doing for hundreds of years. The creature at Jekyll Island, they've been planning this shit for decades, hundreds of years. This complete control mechanism of which they own this structure where they have everybody politically getting pulled at the strings and Bitcoin is going to foil that in plain sight and Jay-Z is going to buy a share? Are you fucking joking me? Are you fucking kidding me? They're just going to let Bitcoin come in here and poop on that? Are you out of your fucking mind, Pop? You know what's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen, Cheese Wheel. Janet Yellen is going to wake up one day and everyone's going to be complaining to her. All of her, all of the powers that be are going to be like, yo, Big Jan, um, shut it down, shut it, shut it down. And she's going to come out with some things that she's going to say, you need to do KYC, know your customer. You need to do money laundering, and it's going to need to get regulated, taxed, monitored, ID, all the stuff, all the things that make it so great. It's so great. Oh, all those things that make it so great are going to be the crucial elements of its demise. You fucking...
Chooches! That's what's gonna happen. So Yellen's gonna come out, she's gonna say, know your customer, all these restrictions, it's gonna need to get regulated, it's gonna need to get monitored, it's gonna be attached to whatever to prevent money laundering. As soon as it gets big, as soon as it reaches fever pitch, they're gonna come in and they're gonna be like, blah, blah, and just like that, it's gonna boo, and it's gonna bomb.com to the motherfucking ground. And all those people are going to lose their ass. They're gonna use their, lose their fucking ass. They're gonna lose their ass, and you know what's you know what's gonna happen when they lose their ass? They're gonna go just like this right to the government, and they're gonna be like, "Save us, no!" And they're gonna and they're gonna use this this Bitcoin crash as this moral hazard why the government needs to run and operate everything. They're going to be. Begging for it. It's a fucking trap. It's a trap. They're gonna set you up and then blow you out of the water Blow you out of the water And everyone's gonna be left with their fucking dick in their hand and a bunch of Bitcoin And they're gonna be like oh, no. and like all these people that have been gloating and showboating and fucking swinging for the fences about Bitcoin are going to get like terribly clapped overnight Clap and they're gonna be like, nah. And they're gonna, the first place they're gonna look is the government. And they're gonna be like, see, not. like, that's what's gonna happen. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm just saying, probably. Maybe. I don't know, but like, maybe, dude. Like, literally, maybe. I'm just saying. So it's just like, if they lie about everything, if they goose everything, if they literally do this, Right in our face. Clap, 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 clap. And you're going to lead me to believe that Janet Yellen is just going to be like, go ahead, go ahead with your Bitcoin. Just go ahead with your Bitcoin and just, just ruin, ruin the fucking Federal Reserve Bank. What? That's what you're going to lead me to believe? I like this, I like this standing desk. I can really get it. I need a fan or something. I need to turn the fan on, Pop. I'm heating up. I'm heating up. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> Did you guys like when I was like, burr, burr, burr. I thought that was pretty fun. <laughs> uh, but anyways. <laughs> so like I'm saying, like I said, it's just like, this, like everything they do, is literally a setup. Like, it's a setup. It's a setup. Oh, like, like I have this one friend who's been dunking on me lately because of Bitcoin, and I'm like, dog, like, it's like, bro, okay. It's like, I can't help but just be like, okay, all right. It's like, yeah, maybe you're right, but like, probably not, but maybe, maybe. Thank you, Kelly, for the badge. Thank you. So, I'm just saying, I just think that this Bitcoin situation is a big setup. And I think that everybody's gonna get, yeah, just like hey, just like AOC, clap, trapped, and goose. That's what's gonna happen. So it's just like, I really think that the moral hazard that this Bitcoin creates is just horrendous. It's horrendous. Here's the other thing. Let me just, let me just freaking, let me just put my thumb inside your anus. Let's just, let me just, Insert my thumbelina into your news for a second and just let me tell you if I let me tell you if I feel anything warm I'm just saying if you don't know who made it if you don't know who invented this, right? Okay, you don't know who invented this and there's a billion dollars. Okay, you don't know who invented this Imagine if someone just had a backdoor key where they could just get up and just skip and just freaking scoop all of you clowns Oh, it's Satoshi Nakamoto. It's like, yeah. Or it's like, or it's like Bob Jones in freaking Milwaukee, and he's like, Duh, I'm a quadrillionaire. Like, maybe it's just not. Maybe it's literally not. I'm just saying. But whatever, whatever. Oh yeah, it's decentralized. Yo, it's you're on you're on the roulette wheel at the MGM Grand Pop. Bitcoin, it's just just like the vast majority of these cryptos. It's just like You're basically buying it's like buying gift cards to the arcade It's just like if the arcade goes out of business the gift cards useless. These are just gift cards It's like it's like if Southwest Airlines called called their airline points 
cryptocurrency or money. It's not money. It's just a freaking statistic that's managed by a private entity. It's like, what are you talking about? Yet Bitcoin is going to foil the greatest financial scheme to ever exist in the history of time? Please. They're going to hide in plain sight and they're just going to let, like, what? That's what you think is going to happen? All right. Like, maybe, dog. I mean, like, okay, fool me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just saying, like, I don't know, bro. It sounds like a scam. Morgan Stanley is going to bet on Bitcoin. It's going to bet on Bitcoin. Okay. And then it's like Elon Musk buys Bitcoin and puts Bitcoin on the balance sheet of Tesla. All right, well, Tesla's at, like, absolute record highs right now. They got more money than God. They have the most insane amount of money on their balance sheet ever in the history of time. They can afford to do it, but it's like, if you were investing in if you were investing in Tesla right now, like I would consider that to be a little bit of a risk. Now, if they have a ton of money, it doesn't really matter. But to me, that represents a risk because if you have a one point five billion dollars, like, why are you not investing that in plant equipment? Why are you not investing that in engineers? Why are you not investing that in more vehicles, in faster production, in more machines? Fauci. Everybody's asking for Fauci. Do Fauci. Fauci. Yo, Fauci is trash. Yo, Fauci is the worst of all time. Do Fauci. Oh God, someone's in the someone's in the comments. Trust in the plan, bro. It's trust in the plan. Yo, I just noticed. I just noticed, I'm like doing this. I just noticed I'm moving a lot. Is that bothering you guys? Is it bother? Is it bothering you that I'm not like sitting stationary? Cause like I'm, I'm watching it on my computer and I notice that I'm going like this. I just wonder if that's bothering anybody. Yeah, somebody said you're rocking on a boat. You're seasick. <laughs> All right, I'll cool it. <laughs> I'm seasick. My bad, I didn't even realize that. Oh, a bunch of people are saying no. Some people are saying yep. Some people are saying no. My bad. Whatever, bro. Quit. Quit. Quit telling me what to do. If you don't have a badge, I'm not listening to you. No, I'm just kidding. Some people are like, nope, you're good. All right, cool. <laughs> Turn the fuck up. <laughs> I am turning up. It's so stupid that I have to look over here for the comment over over here for the comments. Anyways, some people are like keep doing it. <laughs> you look like you're playing DDR. All right. Keep doing it. Get the footwork going. All right. I will. This jabroni is making me seasick. <laughs> Holy hell. Literal jabrons. Literal jabrons. Do you sleep? No. It's 10:45. I'm always listening. If anybody wants to know, I'm always listening to Nora and Pure. Oh, I just realized I'm doing it again. I'm always listening to Nora and Pure. That's what I'm always doing. Nora and Pure is what I play when I'm on here because it's quiet, it's good, and it's always reliably solid. So, okay. So it's like, all right, we've established that we've established that DC is a circus. We're, we've established that every single thing that these people talk about is trash. We've, ex we've established that it's complete hypocrisy from top to bottom and that it's light herald trash. We've ex we've, we all understand that. We know that this is a, a charade in DC. We know that, we know that the GameStop garbage is going to be the thing that they focus on this week. But what's next? It's just like, this is all just distraction. All of these things are distractions from all the stuff that actually matters. It's like, bro. They don't care about us, yet people still choose to vote for them and elect them and celebrate them. Oh, look, it's New Selene. Oh, wow. Like, who's sitting at their crib like, yo, New Selene just dropped a hot new TikTok. New Selene dropped a TikTok. <laughs> Let's watch it. Let's all sit down and watch. It's like, who's doing that? Literally zero people on earth are doing that. Yet he's got a TikTok. Who follows Gavin New Selene on TikTok? What are you doing? Like, what is, like, what does your life look like if you're just like, hey, guys, just grabbed a, just, just followed New Cellini. It's like, fuck. That's sick. What's his handle? That's super dope. What, literally, what's his handle? Oh, it's Gav Gav. It's Gav Gav. It's Gav Gav 69. It's I'm a trash fire. One, two, three. 
It's a cool song. I can't turn the music up too loud though because I did a live stream the other day and I like take the live streams and I put them on the tube of you. And I took the live stream and put it on, on the tube and they were like, copyright claim. Cause it was like five seconds from this one track and I'm like, what the hell? So I just got, I got, I got bamboozled by the tube of you. It was like, you've received a copyright claim. So like the 30, like the minute or whatever, when I was, had that one song that was recognized playing, it had to like mute my voice or something. And I was like, okay, fine. But it was just, I just don't want to, I don't want to mess with it. Cause it's just like, you don't want to, you don't want to set yourself up to get bamboozled in the fuge. That's cause like, that's how they do it, you know? You know the thing that really got me on 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 pronunciation or pronouncing things pronouncing things wrong is there's this guy on um, there's this guy on YouTube that has this really funny video called pronouncing things incorrectly and he um, I forget his name but he has this really funny YouTube video called pronouncing things incorrectly and it's one of the funniest like one of the funniest videos I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was so funny. And he's like, pronouncing things incorrectly, or pronouncing things incorrectly. That's what he said, it's the best. This is one of the best videos I've like, ever, like literally ever seen in my life. So now I just hit you with the like, literally Jabron James, Jabron James, and just everything else. I forget his name. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Somebody's like, how about Billy the, how about Billy the farmer? So when he says Tide Pods, yeah, he says like titty, titty Padees or something like that. Lie titter, lie terrily. Somebody says, have you noticed Tommy Vexed watching this? He is Bad Wolves amazing super huge. I know. <laughs> super huge. That's cool that he's watching. I didn't know that. Why is he in the comments? What up, Tommy, if you're in here? What's good, dog? I don't see him in the comments. That's cool if he is watching, though. That's what's up. Tommy's the man. A lot of people found me because of Tommy. He he helped he helped uh, he helped my account get noticed back in the back in the very beginning. Back in the early days of Sasalado, Tommy was one of the really one of the really big accounts that reposted my stuff, along with a couple other big ones like Wake Up with Linda, like um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Tommy G was one of the first ones to repost me. Wake Up with Linda, Tommy Vexed, um, Andy Frisella reposted me very early on uh, my first video, and uh, those those helped me those helped me really get a lot of traction. So I have uh, lots of love and respect um, for those people because they they really helped me grow the account. But you know what else? Yeah, see people in the comments. I found you because of Tommy. That's right. And hey, the other thing that the other thing too is I really appreciate you guys because all of you guys have helped spread it to like you instead of you spreading it to ten thousand people, you spread it to ten people, and those get to ten people, and really it all it all hashes out to about the same thing. So I appreciate it. Nice, found me through Ian. Nice, that's awesome. Through Ian went. Nice, nice. Ian wanted to go live tonight. I told him I might go live with him. I should message him and tell him to tell him that we could jump on. Because he definitely wants to chat. Nice. People saying they found me through Tommy. That's awesome. That's killer. Found you through Ian. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, somebody's dropping lizards. Rocksteady dropping lizards. Nice. <laughs> I found you from TikTok clips. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, a couple people have posted my videos on TikTok, and I don't, I don't, I don't have a TikTok because I thought Donnie was gonna shut it down. So I just never really, I never really dove into the TikTok. Um, found you through Tommy, through Ian. That's awesome. Wiki list, Wiki list. Who is a conspiracy theorist? Found you via Redcon. That's awesome. Found me on Facebook. That's cool. I found you sifting through steamy brown MSM card. <laughs> Yo, I love how I love how, I love how my vernacular just <laughs> just has made its way into the into the zeitgeist. I hope you guys are just out in the world being like facts are indeed trash. The world is hot brown, <laughs> and everything is garbage. I love that. That's so funny. I wore my facts as trash shirt today. Nice. That's awesome. It normalizes softcore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I've explored it a couple of times where you just get trapped in there because it's like videos on loop. Like, it's just like Garbaggio, 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 Garbaggio. And it's like too many girls just being like. It's like, okay. It's like you have a filter on. That's a lot of makeup. 
that's a push-up bra, and you're fucking 18. Like, I'm 30. I feel like I can't, like, I can't do this. Found your, because a friend shared one of your videos. Nice. Every time I take out the trash, I think of you. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> My husband says everything is garbage on the regular. That's fantastic. Nice. I can't, Jake, I can't have normal conversations anymore because of my zaps. Good. That's ideal. <laughs> ah, jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, I saw a friend of mine wearing a Donnie baseball shirt today. That's awesome. TikTok is chancy stuff. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That's funny. Yo. So, mm, yeah. So again, like, here's the thing. All right, so I've been thinking about, so if we get, if we all get wrapped up in this trash, if we're all just like constantly looking at how just like the world's a dumpster fire and everything is garbage, someone goes, what do you call the flip flop paddle walk? I call it the Bobby step. Corona clap. Yeah, if you're calling, if you're calling Cove the, anything other than the Corona clap, you're clueless. It's literally the Corona clap. <laughs> the Bobby Sauce store. Uh, I forget what I was saying. Um, so, anyways, so what I was saying is, is like, if you, what I've been realizing lately, it's like the more that I look at this stuff, the more that I pay attention. I called my boss a chooch today. Nice. The more that I look at the world at large and and the hypocrisy of all these people and these jabrones, the more I'm just like, yo, like, I you you can't help but feel helpless in this zone because they're just, they're like literally clapping us, just dropping the steamiest of corn, corn laced brown, like right in your, right in your cup of joe, pop. It's like, I'm sitting here trying to enjoy a, enjoy a hot cup of, cup of joe and I got a, and I got a hot steamy brown in there. And I'm like, dog, I, like it's the same color, but like, I'm not stupid, pop. Like I see the dump in there. <laughs> So you're just like sitting there and you're just like, well, now I got to either get a new coffee. Like, that's what I feel like life is. You're just like watching them poop in your cup and you're like, ah, bro. Like, but you like can't reach the cup, but somehow you're drinking, maybe you're drinking it out of a really long straw and you're like, dog, like you can't stop them from pooping in there. Or maybe you just don't want to, like you're trying to put your hand out to stop the brown, but you're like, no, and you just can't. And then you just have to watch them just dump right in your cup and you're like, you're like, no, now I have to like, now I need to find other things to drink. So I feel that way when I watch, like when I'm at the gym, like I'm in the gym and I'm like looking at all the TVs and it's like, and it's like Rachel Maddow being like, like, cause the volume's not on. So it's just her being like, and it's just like, it's like the guy's not in office. And they're just like, Donny, 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 Donny. And then like they're showing this replay of the cap on loop. It's just like loop, it's on the loop-de-loop. -loop. They got James and the Giant Peach. The James and the James and the Giant Peachman. They got Denal Ballpark. They got people shaking a shaking, shaking a same fence on loop. They got people in the cap, like like literally shooting selfie videos, and they're like, Aah! and it's like, yo, play something else. Like we get it. Like everybody gets it, but they're just like constantly, just like fear, 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 division, divide. Everybody be angry. Everybody be mad. Everybody be scared. Corona clap. Corona clap. Corona clap. Corona clap. And it's like. Ah, and it's like there's so many other things to pay attention to. There's so many other horrendous things occurring out on the planet of Earth, and they're over here talking about my daughter. My daughter won't go to the Capitol. Like, who cares? Shut up. No one cares about your 24 year old daughter, you chooch. Like, cool, dude. Like, I get it, and I get it. They're being very emotional. They're trying to they're trying to tickle your bean, your heartstrings through your bean bag. But like, dude. It's unconstitutional, first of all. The fact that it's even occurring is a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's garbage. The guy just spoke, and if you cut it, if you cut his words out of context, which they did, and they always do, then yeah, it looks pretty bad if you make a montage video. If you were to cut this video, just this live stream, if you were to just cut this live stream and cut different pieces out, I would look like a piece of garbanzo. They'd be like, poop in your cup of coffee. Lib, lib, lib. Johnny Baseball. They'd be like, this guy's a psychopath. But if you watch it in context, it's like, oh, oh, sick. It's just like, yo, you suck. 
Like you are the worst. Like you are the worst representation of a Homo sapien sapien on the planet of Earth. And for anybody that doesn't know what a Homo sapien sapien is, it's a human. People are like these the Homo sapien. Like what is that? Like, that's xenophobic. It's like no, because that's how they do it. They just find things that they don't even know, and they're just like that. Nah, oh my god! Like I'm a man. Oh, it's like, ugh. It's like you're the literal worst on the planet of Earth. You're the worst in the galaxy of milk. Whatever. Anyways, I digress again, again and again, digressing again, whatever. Um, anyways. As I was saying, back to my original point that I made 73 points ago because I'm insane. People are like, is this guy on drugs? No. I'm just high on oxygen and poop life and poop world. The world is garbage and it's got me lit, fam. I got 30 badges in here. 30, 30 people bought badges. I'm, I'm high off the hog. I'm going to take that $73 and go buy me the largest sandwich at the, at the grocery store. Yay, I'm going to buy 12 sandwiches and a, and a, veg, and a vegetable tray. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Don't, please don't think that I don't. Um, I very much appreciate it. So anyways, since we know that the world is trash and everything is garbage and these clowns are just full of hypocrisy and literally every single thing is the worst thing of all time, it just brings me kind of back to the original, the original ethos, the original theory about like how to handle life as the world burns to the GD ground. First, obviously, you know, you know all of my like, you know all of my normal kind of viewpoints on things where it's like, we should be having conversations, you should be using your social media, you should be speaking out about it, you should be supporting people that you, you should be supporting creators that you like, you should be taking money away from institutions or businesses that you don't like, you should find, you should support, uh, you should support, support the people in your local community, support your friends, keep the money that you're spending in a circle, find other streams of income, you saw my thing the other day about fortifying yourself financially and all that stuff up and like you understand my philosophy as it relates to that but it's like just about the greatest thing that we can do right now is like all of those things that I just mentioned fortifying your financial position make sure you make sure making sure that your credit is right and all of that stuff but the thing that's really got me like really got me juiced up which I've been really thinking about really thinking about a lot lately the badges are so fun that's awesome thank you for buying that that's so cool um, what's really got me juiced up lately is mindset mindset it's like literally this is the most this is the most thank you jen thank you so much for buying another badge that's awesome thank you so much for that appreciate it um what's really got me juiced up lately is this is the philosophy and the idea of just like, controlling your mindset and just being in control of the things that you think about day to day it's like all right so we know that these people are hypocrites we know that everything is garbage we know that the world is trash we know that they're dominating everything we're speaking out about it we're using our voice we're using our socials we're talking to other people but really the best thing that we can do is like fortify your financial position get your credit right get money in the bank make sure that you have a side hustle make sure that you have a job that you like but most importantly probably over all those things is make maintaining your mindset and controlling how you think about life your disposition how are you gonna how are you gonna execute how are you gonna win how are you gonna get to the next level how are you gonna succeed that's the thing that I've been like really cooking on a lot lately is like if we can if we don't control our mindset we're toasted we're literally toasted and all of those other things don't even matter it's like and I've used this example before it's like when you're on the airplane and the mask comes down they say make sure that you put your mask on first it's like we got to make sure that our operation is locked up operating at the highest possible level that we're crushing it destroying it and our mindset is on point before we before we try to help anything else so it's like as we navigate through this trash fire that is going to be the next couple of years it's just like succeed in your own life make sure that you get your make sure you get that cheese make sure you get your guap right get your credit right make sure that your mindset is right you know take a walk make walk do longer walks think more be be better try to better yourself you know that's been like kind of the thing i've been thinking about lately and i've been gearing up for the I've been gearing up for the Real AF podcast, which I'm going on in two weeks. I'm going to fly out to St. Louis, and I'm going to go on the Real AF podcast with Andy Frisella. And this dude is like a mindset genius. This dude is super sharp about mindset. This dude is on point. So I'm trying. I'm like, I gotta get. I gotta get my head right to roll up in there and be sharp. I gotta be sharp as a. I gotta be sharp as a ta as a tack pop. So that's what I've been thinking a lot about lately. And it's not even about the show. It's just about life in general. It's like, how do I make sure that I'm hitting at the highest level? And like one of the things, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, I don't mean to leave a hot brown in your cold brew coffee cornmeal, but I'm just saying like, 
marijuana was the thing that really held me back that I didn't even realize. It was like the silent, it was like the ch silent chooch, like chirping in my ear. And I'm not saying I'm never going to smoke, smoke the herbs again. Maybe I will. I don't know. But like not smoking Weeble Wobble has been very helpful to my mindset, Cornmeal. I'm just saying like back when I used to smoke the Weebles, I was like, oh, like I'm going to, I'm going to smoke a blunt till I die. Like I'm going to smoke all the blunts. Like I was like, this is so sick. I'm like, you watch a funny movie. It, I'm telling you, it slows you down. It slows you down. I remember I listened to I remember I listened to Grant Cardone one time. People don't know Grant Cardone, pretty smart cat, big real estate investor, sales coach, whatever, big social, whatever. And he was like, he was like, yo, he's like, if you're still smoking weed, he's like, you're you're losing, dog. He's like, you're losing. And I, I don't remember his exact words, but it was something along that effect. And I was always like, he doesn't know, bro. Like, you don't know. Like, you don't know. And it's like. Yeah, kinda. And I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to like dunk on anybody that smokes 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 the schneef. I'm not saying that. I've rolled one to a quadrillion blunts. But I'm just saying like when I think back about the last 12 months or however long it's been since I stopped smoking weed, it's like how my life has radically changed as a result of not smoking weed all the time. From time savings to not inhaling tobacco to not not inhaling all those chemicals to not inhaling a fucking like lighter fluid to to the time. Driving to the store to buy blunts, driving back to the store to buy blunts, cutting the blunt, rolling the blunt, smoking the blunt, ashing the blunt, all that stuff. It's like that takes time. And if it's like, oh, it's just a minute, it's just five minutes, it's just 10 minutes. What happens is it slows your brain processing down. It, it slows your brain processing down and your ability to hit at a high level is, is impeded. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, do whatever you want. If you're smoking a jib right now, smoke the jib. I'm not here to, I'm not here to rain down blows on you. I'm just saying it changed, it changed my life, not smoking weed. And it's like, once you don't miss it, you just don't miss it. And like, I get it. I smell it. I like, like when I smell it, I'm like, oh, nice. Like somebody's smoking a blib. Like, that's awesome. But I'm telling you this live would not be as interesting if I was high. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't. I'm just telling you, it wouldn't. I did a, I did a podcast. I've done a couple podcasts with people that were smoking weed during the podcast, and like we're talking about real sharp stuff, and then they smoke the whibs, and I'm like, and like their questions are like, bro. And I'm just like, yo, know, it's like, it's like I'm at a hundred and you're at like ninety three now, and it's like I'm not saying you're out of it. I'm just saying I'm at a hundred and you're at ninety three. You know what I'm saying? It's like. And I've used this example many times in the past when I've been talking about like people that you have relationships with. It's like if I'm going 100 and you're going 97, we're together for a while. Even if we, like you're, I'm going 100 miles an hour, you're going 97 miles an hour, and we're both advancing in that direction. You're going to be neck and neck with me for a long time. But after two hours, I'm six miles ahead of you. After three hours, I'm nine miles ahead of you. After four hours, I'm 12 miles ahead of you. After 100 hours, I'm, I, I can't even see you anymore. I don't even know where you are. I'm in a different state. So it's just like, you understand what I'm saying? And like, if you want to say, oh, that's not fair. Okay, fine. 99 and 100. 99. All right, I'm a mile ahead of you now. That's kind of far. Okay, and then it's three miles, then it's 10 miles, then it's 50 miles, and then you're gone. And then it's like, where are you at? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you want to smoke weed, smoke weed. Like, I'm... By all means, like I'm not here to I'm not here to judge anyone from smoke, for smoking weed. I've smoked my fair share of weed. I've probably smoked a hundred pounds of weed in my day. But I'm just saying it, it lets me operate at a much higher level. I'm just saying it's, it has me operating at a high level. And I, what I've been thinking a lot lately about, and like I don't expect anybody else to do this, but it's like, is alcohol really beneficial to my life? And I still drink alcohol, but it's just like, should I be drinking alcohol? It's like, I almost feel like it would be way more lit to just like not drink alcohol. Now, I don't think that I'm ever going to stop drinking alcohol, I like wine and all these other things, but it's like, imagine how high, of a, imagine how high of a level you'd be operating at if you didn't smoke weed and didn't drink alcohol. You just, just, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm like, I, I have wine. Like I bought wine tonight. Like I purchased, I purchased wine. It's in the fridge. You know, but it's just like, do I need that? Right. Do I want that? I don't know. So it's just like, I've been thinking a lot about alcohol and it's like, this is kind of like a low energy Jeb. This is like the elixir of a low energy Jeb type of mindset. Right. So it's just like, think about people that operate at a high level. Think about people like Donnie. Donnie has never drank booze in his life. 
You know what I'm saying? Like this dude's operating at a high level. Now he's operating at a high level in certain respects. In other respects, he's he does things that are not the best. But it's just saying. It's like imagine. So whatever, do whatever you want. I'm just saying, these are the things that I've been thinking a lot about lately where it's just like interesting. Like how do I get to another level? When I was in, when I was in high school, or maybe just after high school, high school, me and my buddies, like the first time we ever tried mushrooms, and I'm not endorsing mushrooms, do whatever you want with mushrooms, I'm not saying you need mushrooms, I'm just saying I ate mushrooms. Whatever, do whatever you want with it. But. I ate these mushrooms, me and all my buddies, and we like, I swear to fucking, I swear to, I, I, I've looked into a mirror, and anybody that's eaten mushrooms that looks into a mirror, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're eating mushrooms, especially the first time, and you look in a mirror, oh my god, like it's like, it's in, it's like quasi-dimensional, it's like, it's a whole other thing. I looked in the mirror and I literally saw my body age through my entire life, it was insane. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I think I floated. My friends saw me like literally float. So maybe I floated or maybe I just didn't because we were on mushrooms. But anyways, anyhow, what I was going to say about the mushrooms was one of my really good friends, my best friend, didn't eat the mushrooms. And we were all chilling, like tripping out. We were all talking and jamming and we were all razzle dazzle and like everybody was laughing and having a good time. And we were just like, yo, what's your deal? Like, why are you, you know what I'm saying? And what we determined was this dude was able to naturally trip just trip on life, right? And we, we tripped several times over the course of a number of years and he would always be chilling there with us and he would laugh at the same things that we laughed at. And it's just like, did we even need the mushrooms? Like this dude was able to naturally trip just on being in that zone. So it just makes you wonder like, did we even need the mushrooms? Do you understand? So I'm not saying don't eat mushrooms. I'm not saying don't drink or smoke or whatever. I'm just saying it's like, Imagine the level, imagine the degree that you can trip at naturally just on hyper awareness. Like hyper awareness, hyper execution, hyper mind control, hyper operational control over your entire thing. Imagine, you know, that's the type of thing that I've been thinking about lately is like, that would be so cool to just be in like complete control of your whole existence, you know? I don't know, and like maybe I'm getting a little too maybe I'm getting a little too uh, uh, granola uh, granola and oatmeal salad here, but I'm just saying it was something really interesting to think about. Where it's just like, did we, did we, you know? I don't know. Do we need that? I don't know. I'm just saying it was interesting. So, anyways, what it ultimately comes back to, which I think is the thing to remember about all of this stuff, is like. As the world is trash, as the government is a bunch of malarkey, as these people are literally just straight out lying to us, they don't even care. They just lie to us point blank and they're just literal jabrons. They just clap our cheeks left and right and just completely feed us lies and hypocrisy, steal all of our money, steal all of our freedom, take all of our liberties away. They're literally goosing us right in plain sight and for some, for somehow, some way, people are fine with this, which I find mind blowing. Despite all of this, it's just like, it makes you just feel helpless. Where you're like, well, how, like, what, how am I supposed to succeed in this operation? And what I'm saying is what I've been realizing lately is like, it's important to be aware of what's occurring. It's important to be keen and awake to what's happening outside. But it's like, it's really easy to get lost and trapped in all of the trash instead of just taking a closer audit and a closer look at your own operation internally. So it's just like, if you were to take more of a focus off of that stuff and just use it as like, oh my God, that's insane. Like I'm gonna do the best that I can, but I'm gonna make sure that my operation is on point. It's kind of like things would be better, right? So like, let me give you, let me give you like a real life practical example of how I started thinking, of how I'm thinking about this. So like, when I used to get up in the morning to work on websites and I was running my web development business, I would wake up in the morning and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get to work. Like, I gotta make money. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. And I was like, right in it. Like, as soon as I woke up, I was in. And I'm like, I can't go to the gym till later at night because it's like, I gotta, like, I gotta work. I gotta make money. I gotta get all this stuff, right? And everything is whatever. And when I stopped building websites and I started doing these videos, I'm like, cool. Now, I, I smoked weed throughout my whole website building years, and this whole operation has been non I haven't smoked any trees since I've started making these videos, and since I started interacting with all you guys and being hyper-focused on this project, right? And 
what I realized the other day is like, I would wake up and I would be like feeling all this pressure. Like what's the video of the day? I gotta get it out by one. I gotta get it out by two. I gotta do, I gotta do twice as many. I gotta work twice as hard and all this other stuff. And as a result, it's like I'm on a live stream at nine and then a live stream at 10 and then the gym closes and then I can't go to the gym. And I'm like rushing through the day. And the other day I was sitting here and I'm like, yo, no one gives a shit if you put the video out at one or three or five. You'd be operating at a much better, at a much higher frequency if you just did what you wanted to do and then put the video out when you wanted to put it out. And then like who's, no one, this is an artificial, it's a, it's a byproduct of not having the right mindset about how I approach the day. So for the last two weeks, since the election, I've been like, all right, I'm gonna go to the gym in the morning. And then later at night, I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna walk the dog two, three times a day. I'm gonna focus in on the stuff around the house. I'm gonna do all these other things to just hit at a higher level, right? All the numbers are up. All the followers are up. All the numbers are up. And now there's been a significant hit to the view count because we know how they're, we know how they're demonizing political content lately. So obviously that's been clipping me. Also, a lot less people that were paying attention during the selection are not paying attention now because they're like, I hate politics anyways, let me get it out. So the numbers are down just because they're down. But the actual engagement, the numbers of followers, all those other things, like all the metrics are up. On top of all that, it's like, I just go to the gym. And then for the, for a cup for a week, I was like at the gym and I'm like, what's the video of the day? And I was like listing these long lists of all these things of what I was going to talk about. Right. And then I was like the other day, the other day, two days ago, I was like, I'm just going to not think about it. I'm just going to go to the gym and just gym. And then I'll go home and I'll figure it out. And when I got home, I saw the story. As soon as I walked in the door, I was like, all right, I'm gonna look for this story now. And I, instead of being at the gym for three hours and not having as good of a lift and not having as much engagement on the, not being hyper aware as to what I was doing, I found the story about the guy gorilla gluing his lip to the cup. And I was like, that's hilarious. And I, <laughs> I made the video about the, the glued gorilla glue lip cup video and like that was a fun video and like one of my friends messaged or contacted me last night and was like that's one of the funniest videos you've ever made and I'm like sick and a bunch of people like the Cuomo video so it's like the not the not you know what I'm saying it's like it was the it's all mindset and I've been listening a lot to Andy Frisella and listening to his podcast and listening to the stuff this dude says and he's like he's like yo like get like get the, and I'm just like when you when you don't take time to audit your operation it's so easy to be like this is all trash like this is trash and this is all garbage and it's like so easy to just externalize all the stuff that sucks and it's just like that hyper awareness that's the type of stuff that like weed would let me avoid paying attention to because it's just like yo like i'm gonna smoke this away i'm stressed like i'm about to go rip a blunt like I'm going to watch a movie, I'm going to decompress or whatever excuse that we tell ourselves to escape the need to go through that thought process. Thank you, Rebellious, for buying the badge. Thank you so much. So it's just like, I don't know. I just think that, I think that mindset has a lot, is dictating a lot of our life that we don't even realize it. And it's like, it's just like if we were to operate at the absolute highest level imaginable, if we were to execute at the highest imaginable level, be the greatest that we could ever be, what would be in your life? Would there be weed? Would there be booze? Would there be stress? Would there be time limits? Would there be, you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, if the goal is how do I be the greatest ever to ever that I could ever be? It's just like, does this fit into that? And then reverse engineer back from greatest ever. That's what I've been thinking a lot about lately. It's like, how can I be the best this? How can I be the best Sosalado? How can I be the funniest account? How can I produce the best quality information? How can I be the best? And it's just like, here, that's the game. That is the whole game. In fact, that's the totality of the game. Because it's like you create these habits that never end. These habits are how you approach all things going forward. So it's just like, if I'm gonna sit here and, 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 and externalize my stress relief to weed or to booze or to wine or to some other thing, I'm just taking the power away from where it actually is, which is just control your thoughts, control your mindset. I just think that that's the solution to like all the things. And it's like, it's so obvious. It's so obvious. And you like want to know it and you like you feel like you inherently know it, but you don't act on it day to day, minute to minute. So it's just like, that's how we really, 
That's how we really get ahead. It's just like, if you're not happy with your car, if you're not happy with your job, if you're not happy with your bank account, if you're not happy with your clothes or your watch or your shoes or how many times you could take a vacation or, or, the, or your house or your couch or how nice the food is that your dog eats or whatever. It's just like, if you're not happy with any of the things that are going on, we, we gotta, you got to get on that pop. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. That's because like, like I want a pool. To me, like one of my objectives right now is like get a pool. I live in Florida. It's going to be hot in the summer. It would be so sick to have a pool. I can afford a pool, but I'm using to use that money to invest in other things. So I'm like, well, I wish I had enough money to invest in other things and have a pool. So it's just like, I need to get that pool. How am I going to get that pool? I'm certainly not going to get it by smoking money away. You know, I'm certainly not going to get it by squandering time with counterproductive thought. You know, it's Saturday night, right? Let's just use this example of Saturday night. It's like, I could go out. What am I gonna do if I go out? Okay, yeah, I could get some social. It's important to be social, right? But it's like, what could I do? I could create something. I could interact with people. I could, 35 people bought badges. That's $88 that's in the account because you guys have been buying badges. That's amazing. So I'm working. So not only that, instead of my money going down, the money's going up on top of all that. I'm building rapport with you. I'm building a relationship with you. You guys are contributing back and rewarding me for this decision. It's like money go down or money go up, right? It's like mine stay clear or mine get clouded. It's like, what are we doing? So that's the type of stuff, that's like the tip I've been on lately where I'm like, that would be so fire to just like not to go do the things that you think you're gonna do and have a temporary sacrifice and like get a pool, you know? Like have that pool. Create value for others, entertain. I'm getting smarter, I'm sitting here talking to myself, but like, I'm making you guys happy. There's a hundred, there was 135 people in here before, there's still 95 people after after an hour and a half, to two, almost two hours in here. I'm still talking and ripping and everyone's still watching and enjoying it. It's like, that's sick, that's so sick. I'm just saying, it's like, that's such a cool thing. And it's just like, to think that I'm gonna not embrace that and not lean into that, it's like, that's crazy talk. So, I don't know. I think that's how I'm approaching 2021 is like, yes, the world is trash. Everything is garbage. Everyone's using Bitcoins. Everybody's lost their mind. Mainstream media is a trash fire. Everything is a charade. The world is on fire. Everything is garbage. Yet, we have this. I mean, that's sick, right? I feel like that's so cool. So the fact that I could turn this on and communicate with you guys, bring you guys some value, and then like to think that like this project, this me yelling in my phone, this venting of frustration is gonna get me to meet somebody like Andy Fursell in a couple weeks, like go on his podcast and meet, meet, meet people that operate at a high level, that operate at a high frequency, like that's sick, man. That's the type of stuff that weed would have never brought me, and I've told this, I've told this story before, and you know, do whatever you want with this information, but the night I made the first video that popped off, I was sitting, I was walking down the street and I was talking to my friend and she's like, she's like, you know, people are gonna like come at you. They're gonna come after you because you're talking about political stuff. It's hot right now, Donnie Baseball, like you're gonna get cooked. And I was like, nah, like I'll be good. And like, I just was like, but I did think about it. And this is the thing. If I was high on weed, I would have really doubted whether or not to leave that video up. And to think that I could have been one three dot and then delete away from literally massacring this entire thing. You know, that's the type of thing. It's like when you think about the ripple effect that marijuana would have had. Like imagine if I took that original video that really popped it off and just deleted it because I was self-conscious about it. You know what I mean? Like that's. That's the type of shit that weed does. Like, I've deleted some funny stories in my story because I, like, did it during the day. I thought it was funny. Not enough people watched it. And then I got high and was like, that's stupid. And I just deleted it. So it's like, when you really think about that, there's a lot of things in life where you doubt yourself. And that's what I feel like a little bit of weeble wobble will do to you. It will create doubt. It removes your mental control of what you're doing. And I, I like, like I said, I like smoking weed and there's a, there's, I'm, there's a place and time for it. It's just like, I just don't know that it's productive in your everyday life. You know, do whatever you want. It's just not for me. 
and like I said, I'm not gonna be like that guy. Like I used to. I remember when people when I well, like when I still smoked a ton of weed, and people would be like, "I used to smoke weed, but I'm better than you now." And I was like, "Yo," yeah. <laughs> I was like, "I was like, whatever. It makes me creative." And it's like I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm just saying, that I'm just giving you guys some guidance as to you know how it helped me. Oh, it says my phone needs charging. Why is this not charging? Hold on. Ooh, my phone is not charging. Ooh, ooh. Well, that ain't good. Shit, pop. Oh, that's not good. Well, how do I fix that? Corn pop? Fuck. All right, I gotta change my... Ooh, I gotta charge my phone here. Fuck. Hold on. Technical, technical, technical difficulties. Corn pops? Oh, maybe it was just not... <laughs> it was just not plugged in all the way. What a chooch. Watch this, watch this. Just turn it right on. I was like, maybe the maybe the plug doesn't work. See, if I was high, I would have just, I probably would have just thrown my phone into the garbage. Been like, I need a new phone, guys. I'll see you in a couple weeks. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking, but you get it. Freaking. Is that working now? Probably not. No, it's not. Fuck. Hold on there, jabrones. Give me a second. Why is this not working? Hold up. Ooh, hey. Who are these bitches who be thinking too soft? We don't. How is that not working? What the fuck? I hate everything. I stood and yanked it out. That might be, you actually might be right about that. That's actually a really good point, whoever said that, because you stood up and yanked out. That's a really good point, hold on a second. solution to this. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. It's so annoying that it just stopped working. It's like, could you just not, bro? And it's on back. All right, it's back. All right, we're back, Pop. Cool, everything's trash. <sighs> People are like, hey. <laughs> hey, guys. So, the world is literal garbage. Did you just hit a joint or a bowl? <laughs> it's like, I just like, I just went in, I went on this like whole like weeble wobble rant and then I just like smoked, smoked a jib instead of like charging my phone. I'm like, my phone needs to be charged and then I just like rip a, rip a jib. It seems fine. Justin said, how much do you bench? Honestly, I don't know. I haven't I haven't tried to max out in a while. So I don't know. I don't I don't go to the gym with a person, so I can't really like max out. Plus I'm like not really trying to max out, but I don't know. I could probably bench like two I don't know, probably like two thirty maybe. I don't really know, honestly. But probably I could definitely do two hundred, but I'm not really sure. Maybe two twenty I don't know. I really I honestly don't know. But probably two I would say probably like two twenty five. A Joseph, a Joseph plant. <laughs> Rip a jib jab. I see I got some questions in here. When is Hollywood going down? What do you think about Bolsonaro? What do you think about Gina Carano? I think it's awesome that the Daily Wire is employing Gina Carano and she's gonna start, uh, she's gonna, they're gonna make a movie together. I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really cool. Just drank a bottle of champagne. 
Uh, somebody said that Joey Basement's not the president. Yo, all right, I'm gonna talk about that real quick. I just gotta fill up my, I gotta fill up my my cup here before I get weird. So I'm about to say, talk about that. That's a good. That's a very good topic. Pop, form pops. Great topic. Maybe the best. These are my thoughts, okay? These are just my thoughts. Don't kill me, all right? Don't freak out. These are just my thoughts about this matter, okay? <laughs> People are like, flan me, bro. <laughs> Listen, I find it extremely unfortunate that there are a significant number of people that are still trusting the flan. Like, I want to believe the flan. I want to trust the flan, bro. I really do. I want to trust the flan. But it is counterproductive to all of our success for us to be sitting for a magical unicorn to come down, Donnie on a Blackhawk, Pompeo, Pompeo does a somersault off the Blackhawk, has a freaking, has a, has a, has a rocket pack that Elon Musk engineered for him in his labyrinth. He flies, he does a loop-de-loop, -loop, a three, he, do, he goes, he does a backwards loop-de-loop -loop and then just drops down, rains down subpoenas on everybody. He's dropping subpoenas, Blackhawk, the flan, Pompeo, Pompeo's holding a plate full of flan, Donnie's eating the flan with a spoon and a fork at the same time because he does stuff like that he's got three scoops of ice cream Pompeo the Black Hawk he does a backflip they fly in Pelosi's there they cuff her they take her in a bus to a military tribunal it's in the middle of the White House it's in the field it's in the field it's by the Washington Monument there's a bus there's a bus there's a bus did you see the bus it's a military tribunal the United States is owned by London it's owned by it's owned by the Pope the Pope owns DC. The Pope owns DC. The Pope is in DC. Inside the fence, another country. Inside the fence, another country. The Pope, England, London, Pope, it's another country, another country. Over the fence, country. Outside the fence, America. Inside the fence, another country. If you go in there, you don't trust the flan, Pope. The Pope owns the country. DC is another country. The Pope, flan, trusting the flan. Donnie, Blackhawks, Pompeo, backflip. Does the backflip, it was written. Ancient Sumerian. I saw it. I wrote it online. It was. I saw it on Reddit. I saw it on Reddit. They're being interviewed. It's gonna be on. It's gonna be in D.C. Wednesday. Wednesday. There's a bus. There's a military tribunal. There's a tribunal. I saw it on. Uh, RFK Jr. Bro, like, I love RFK Jr. By the way, <laughs> it was written, bro. Pompeo, like, Pompeo has the codes, bro. It's like. Dog, like this is counterproductive. On the other side of the fence is another country. It's uh, it's owned by London. It's owned by the Bank of London, bro. I saw it on Reddit. I saw it on Wall Street maps. It's like, no, you didn't. I have a super secret, top secret military intel. It's gonna happen in March. It's gonna happen in April. It's gonna be in. Uh, it's kind of. Uh, uh, I can't know the date because I don't know the date. I don't know the date. You don't know the date because there's no date. Trust me. Trust the plan. Trust the plan, bro. Trust the plan. Trust the plan. Trust the plan, bro. I swear it would be more believable if they were, <laughs> it would be more believable if they were like if, <laughs> if they were like, hey guys, 
my uncle, my, un my uncle lives in a pineapple under the sea. He, he's, he's been in a submarine since 1933. RFK, JFK Jr.'s son, he, they took the plane, they faked his death, he did a somersault off the plane with his sister, with his wife. They've been hiding in a submarine since 1999. Here's my uncle. I just met him. He, I'm gonna go get him. My uncle's here to tell you the plan. He was military ops. He was Green Beret. And then he walks in like this. Hi, I'm his uncle. It's like, you're the same part. Like, I would like terribly believe that more. Here's my uncle. It's like, let me get, let me go back and get Joey. It's like, hey guys, did you like my uncle? It's like, come on, bro. Like, like, trust the flan. Like, I literally would believe it more if it was that. Did you know that inside the fence is another country? It's like, what? What are you talking about? If you look at the flag, there's yellow, there's yellow on the flag. That's the military, like, no, no, Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin. Don't worry guys, the world's gonna operate with Dogecoin. It's like, shut up. Maybe, maybe bro, maybe. I'm just saying maybe, but like, I don't know. I don't think so. Trust the flan. And then it's like, fucking, it's just like, ah, uh, you got a question. Like, this is the thing. Like, I want to believe all this stuff, but it's like, yo, what are your sources, dog? And then they're just like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. And it's like, oh, then why are we watching this? It's like the the biggest live stream I've ever done has had like a 1,500 people, which was on the 6th of January, because obviously everybody in the world was like, yo, <laughs> they're like, they like thought I, they thought like when they saw my live stream bubble, they thought that I was going to be like, like lighting a fire, like lighting a freaking car on fire and like doing a somersault that like, just like, bo like Bobby Rolatini, like Rolatini in the Capitol grass, you know, that's what everybody thought I was going to be doing. So they're like, tune in, tune in, like like it's like they couldn't hit the button fast enough you know and like six or seven hundred people were in there to hear my thoughts about it but it's like that's that was the biggest live stream i ever had meanwhile when i when i tune into these live streams now that are talking about like the plan and the flan and like which flan is the best flan and like my nana made the flan or like whatever it's like there's like thousands of people watching and i'm like dog like what it's like trusting the flan is just like, I like, no, I mean, maybe like, look, maybe I'm going to go, I'm going to hit you with a maybe pop, but like, I don't know. I'm just going to go with no, but I'll hit you with a maybe. I don't know. And then it's like, to me, the most concerning aspect of this is just like, oh, like, I don't know when though. Like it could be March, it could be May, it could be April, it could be 2066. It could be what, it could be like what, like divided upside down backwards. Look at the back of like Pompeo, like it's like I saw a picture of Pompeo. Pompeo had the Nike Air Jordans. They came out in 1998, 98, 98, divided by 93, divided by 993. It makes 2024, 24. That's the date, the date. Wait till 2024. In the meantime, in the meantime, buy my program, buy my flan, buy my show, pay, pay me, endorse me, buy my merchandise, buy all the things, enrich me, because trust the plan, trust the plan until 2000 and 1000. 2114 is when the plan's gonna come through. Pompe the, the ghost of Pompeo took a time machine to 20, 2163 when they really needed him. It's gonna be Pompeo. It's gonna be 2093. We're all gonna be about, we're all gonna be on our deathbed and like Pompeo is gonna like pop out of a cardboard box and be like, Pompeo, I've had the codes the whole time. And he's like there with JFK Jr. He's like 260 years old. He's like, oh, I've been hiding under the sea. Like I've been in a pineapple under the sea since 99. It's like, dog. No, I don't know. Maybe, like literally maybe, but probably not. I'm just saying. Donnie's grandfather was a... Donnie's grand... Like, shut up. I don't know. Like, maybe. Again, like, I'm not trying to belittle these people. I'm saying these are jokes. I'm a comedian. I'm here making jokes, trying to entertain you. These are for jokes. Like, I'm doing it for the badges. I'm doing it for badges. <laughs> I'm just saying it's jokes. But like, yo, I don't know, man. 
I don't know. Pompeo. Pompeo has the codes. Like, Pompeo has the codes. Like, he's in the codes. I don't know. But it's just like, I just like try to, I try to storyboard it. I try to storyboard it in my mind, right? I try to just storyboard this situation in my brain, right? I'm trying to look into my, I'm looking through my ojos into the soul of the earth, into the soul of this nation, into the soul of Joey Basement. And I'm like, what is going to happen? What do we think is going to happen? I'm just curious. Like, let's just, let's map it out. Let's reverse, let's reverse engineer this situation, Cornmail. Okay. There's a fence around the Capitol and the Capitol is owned by the Vatican and the Pope. And they own this piece of land with, the, with London, London and the Pope. They own the land. They own the land. And we're all these peasantries live, living out here on, in the United States of, it's a corporation. We live in a corporation. I am a corporation. Pompeo is the CEO of the, of the corporation. Like, I live in a corporation. Like, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. Put your left foot in, put your right foot out. Pompeo, it's a plan. Jump the fence, you're in another country. Cool. Do you have a passport? Because you're, you're not in America. You're in, you're in the Vatican. You're in the Vatican. You're in the Vatican. Do a flip, you're in the Vatican. Trip and fall, trip over the fence, grab a ladder, you're in the Vatican. Okay. You're inside the Vatican. It's another country. You're in another country. This is not this country. You're no longer, you're no longer in America. Like, what are you talking about? So, so let's just assume that you're right. Let's just assume that you're right. Okay, cool. Let's just, let's storyboard it. Let's like, sit, like gather around children. Grandfather Cisalado has a, has a story to weave. I'm about to weave a story basket for all of you chooches. Cool. So there's a fence around the capital because it's another country. It's owned by the Vatican, and um, England and the, and the Bank of London owns the Vatican. And, and the Va like, and the Pope is just like, <laughs> like, like from his, from his like, oh, but the Pope is a hologram. The Pope is a hologram. The actual Pope is literally a hologram. I saw a video of him disappear. Like, what? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Okay. The Pope is a hologram. <laughs> So the Pope is a hologram, and also the Pope and the Vatican own the United States over this fence, right? Okay, so they own over the fence, ah, and there's buses, and there's military tribunals, and, and Pelosi has been arrested for fucking three months, and they're going to stay there until March 6th, and then all of a sudden, what? Pompeo, Blackhawks, they're going to come down, arrest everybody, Donnie's the true president, all the executive orders, it's just irrelevant, all these people, do you mean Pete Boone? You mean Pete Boone? You mean Boone? You mean Pete Boot? You mean Boot Boot? You mean Buttigieg? Is not the Secretary of Treasury? Well, then who's the Secretary of Treasury? What if it, if he if it was an illegitimate president? Then we have no Secretary of Treasury. Then what happens? The guy that was the Secretary of Treasury just automatically becomes the Secretary of Treasury, or we just have no Treasury Secretary or, or travel or transportation or whatever the fuck he is. It doesn't matter. You get it. So what happens? The planes, trains, and automobiles are just like stop. The, the Vatican didn't tell us what to do. It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean, though? So I'm just saying, like, yo, I don't know, Pop. Like, I literally don't know, Pops. But I'm just saying, how are you planning? How do you think this is going to storyboard out? It's like, the fuck it, like, the fuck it. Like, dog, I'm just saying. You got all these cabinet positions. You got Fooch. You got Fooch. You got John. You got John. Car you got all these Jabrons. You got all these people. And Joey Bass. Like, so all these people, all these cabinet positions, all, all these rules. Oh, they, all, they just revert. And Donnie just shows up. And just Donnie just walks in. And it's like, oh, by the way, Denal does the. It's like, what are you talking about? It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's so funny that I needed a towel <laughs> to, like, to like do a live stream. <laughs> I suppose I could turn a fan on, but anyways. So it's like, all right. So 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 the other the other side of the fence is another country, and the military is running it. The military. 
The military is running it, and there's a super secret, top secret operation that's been in place since 1999. And JFK Jr. was on a plane, and then he faked his death, and he lives in a pineapple under the sea for 23 years, and he waits till after Joey Basement gets in, to after they goose the situation, to after the executive orders are in there, till after all these people die. They're just waiting till after. Then they're gonna shut Donnie down. They're gonna shut down the speech. They're gonna they're gonna put Circle Backy in the in the hell at the helm. Like, what are we talking about? Like, what do we, what do you, what do you mean though? And then, and then what happens? And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, here it is. Here's the proof. You waited until this late for the proof. Like, what do you mean? What about in the, what about in the months leading up to the date? Everybody's corrupt. Every court, every Supreme, every single thing ever is, is like, what are you talking about? I, I get it, like, I really want to believe that, but come on. Somebody's in the comments, like, yeah. It's like, dude. Oh, it was on the Queef message board. All right. <laughs> in that case, it must be true. Fucking, have you ever considered it was, maybe, have you ever considered that, that Queef is a, is, a, is a disinformation agent? Have you ever considered that maybe that's a PSYOP, like, destroying your mind? Leading you down, leading you down a, 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 a freaking uh, a, a golden trail to a, to a hot dumpster? And at the end, you just get clapped? At the end, they tell you to buy Bitcoin to save Pompeo? If you buy Bitcoin, it'll give you the direct line to Pompeo. It'll get, like, if you buy this Bitcoin and put it into a, and put it into a decoder, flip it upside down and email it to yourself, it'll give you the code to Pompeo's, to Pompeo's basement. You go in there and Donnie's in there and they're controlling the world from a pineapple under the sea. Like, what do you mean? He will be president by April 1st. My beanbag, he'll be president by April 1st. You're living, in a, you're living in a dream world of magic. He'll be president by April 1st. Yeah, maybe, dude. And I, like I said, I hope you're right, but I think you're living in a dream world of magic. I think you're living in a pineapple under the sea. I think you're living in a submarine with JFK Jr. And it's like, I'm not trying to disparage you. I'm just saying, I think that... I, th I think that... I think that they're I think that they're leading you down a I think they're leading you down a trail of mistruth pop. I think you got I think you're getting goosed. Don't worry, Bill. <laughs> maybe, Bill, maybe. I think you're getting goosed, personally. I trusted the flan. If you go and watch my videos, I'm like, hold the line, hold the line, Donnie Ballpark, he Donnie will rise again. And like, yeah, he probably will eventually, but probably in twenty twenty four or not at all. So it's just like, ah, here's the other thing. And like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and rain down blows on Donnie because I think Donnie did a great job in a lot of respects. But it's like, what if you had somebody that had Donnie's policies that wasn't, that wasn't doing all of the things that he did, that didn't say all the things that he did, that didn't, that didn't dig his own hole in a lot of respects. I'm just saying, imagine if you had somebody that had the Donnie policies that was younger and sharper, you know what I'm saying? Like... Wouldn't we, would we want Donnie again or would we want that? Like, would we want DeSantis? Like, we might want DeSantis. So it's just like, like, maybe just chill out on the Donnie game and like, let's cool it. Let's not sit here and just like, and like lament over how, how much we miss ball game. Like, I think he did a great job. He, he did certainly did a better job than Joey Baseman. Everybody's in agreement on that. I'm just saying, it's like, the guy, like, the guy kind of dug a hole for himself in a lot of respects. It's just like, you can't deny that. Like, and I appreciate him being himself and like, I'm on team ball game. I'm just saying, it's just like, let's just not forget, you know, like he had the power to do lots of things like section 230 and a variety of other things. And it's like, those things didn't get done. All right. I'm just saying like, let's not get crazy about it. So whatever, but I'm pro ball game. I'm just saying. We need to like, I don't know, maybe like make a plan for the future. Because while everybody is trusting the flan, bro, while everybody is waiting for April 1st or April 9th or April 37th or whatever, while everybody is waiting for Pompeo to repel off of a Black Hawk and save America, these dudes are stealing everything from us. They're like stealing everything in point point blank. And if you're sitting there resting on your resting on your hands, waiting to trust the flan, while they're literally stealing every single thing out of your out of your backyard, and you're sitting in the front yard, like wait for the plan, bro. It's like you're getting goosed, pops. You're literally getting goosed. Like you're getting goosed. You're getting goosed. I'm just saying we're all getting goosed. So, all right.
you know? So can we move on from like Donnie, like Donnie's on a Blackhawk, he's rappelling down, Pompeo has the codes, like everyone's gonna get saved. Like, uh, like America's in, a, like, another country's in the fence, like, behind the fence. Like, can we move on from that? Is that productive thought right now? I'm just saying. Like, is that productive? I don't know. It sounds to me like it's not. You know? Imagine what's happening while you're not paying attention to what's going on. You know, imagine what would happen if you spent that time instead of preparing for this global cataclysmic event in which they're going to come in your house and steal your like, like what? You know what I'm saying? Imagine what's occurring while you're not paying attention while you're like, trust the plan. JFK Jr. is in a pineapple under the sea in the Strait of Hormuz. Donnie's there. Pompeo. They're doing backflips. They're 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 doing they're swimming with the dolphins and they're gonna control the world from from Starlink. They got Elon. Elon's there. Elon's with Starlink. They're on. Mar they're colonizing Mars. And Pompeo is gonna be the president of Mars. It's like, what do you mean, dude? I'm just saying. Like, let's not get crazy here. Let's not trust the flan. I'm just saying, like. You're gonna tell me that you're gonna tell me that a fucking chain link fence in Washington DC is the border of another country? What the fuck are you talking about? Shut up. I just I'm just saying like maybe I'm maybe I'm like opening myself up for shots, but like that shit's dumb. I'm just saying, whatever, like hate on me if you want this is my opinion and these are jokes like i'm a comedian like i'm here like i'm here making jokes i'm just saying these are jokes like let's not like don't jump on my beanbag and kick it into kick it into my stomach i'm just saying i don't think that that's real dude i don't think that a chain link fence around the capital is some signification that fucking <laughs> that we're in another country yeah tito ortiz is fucking right Fuck trusting the plan. Fight for the future. That's big facts. That's significantly sized, gigantic facts. Tito Ortiz has a fucking fax machine, and he just faxed me a fucking letter. And he just hopefully faxed you a letter because he's fucking right. Like, literally, like, receive the facts. Like, don't pick the phone up. That's not how you get a fax. Print the facts. Make sure there's paper in your printer, you cornbread. Oh, trust the flan. Like, I don't need a printer. I don't like faxes. It's like, yo, you just got a literal fax from Tito Ortiz. Read it. Like, literally read it. I'm just saying. Text it to your friends. Just saying. So, as I said, it's just like, yo, they're, they're, like, they're literally clapping our cheeks, taking our freedom, stealing our money, m making a charade, making a literal charade out of this entire process. They're on TV crying about this bullshit that any of the, that any person in the democratic party could quite literally would have to be going to court for the exact same thing like Maxine Waters like all of these people that did the exact same thing that incited way more than Donnie did by saying peacefully march and so it's just like doc you know what I'm saying it's like they are full of shit they are literally full of shit and all and people are out here we've got thousands of people thousands of people thousands on a live stream where it's like trust the flan april 1st march 1st like doing like doing like 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 the date like it's like the dates are coming at them and they're like march 1st march 17th i don't really know what it's gonna be and it's like pick a plan bro like what's the plan oh there's no plan oh the, the plan is there's no plan what the fuck are you talking about i'm just saying like, what do you mean? Like, literally, what do you mean? Yes, exactly. Dino's right again. Wasted our tax money. It's fucking right. They're sitting, like, these are our employees, Pop. These are literally our employees. And they're sitting there in Capitol Hill squandering time instead of helping the people, instead of helping the citizenry of the districts, states, and areas that they represent. And instead, they're just sitting there crying about... My daughter doesn't want to come to the Capitol. Who fucking cares about your daughter, you chooch? Shut up. My daughter is so sad now. Shut the fuck up. This is like the principal prosecutor. Shut the fuck up. I'm just saying, shut up. You fucking hypocrites. Fucking hypocrites. Hippocratic oath. The most hypocriticals of all the planet. You fucking suck. Suck. This is such fucking malarkey. 
Oh, let's get it. Let's let's get advice about let's get advice about the lockdown from Melinda. Get like what? What? Like what do you mean? They're they're, they're like it's like like there are people all over the United States that are getting destroyed. Getting a light terribly destroyed. Their money destroyed, their income, their employees, their business. Oh, you gotta put you gotta eat outside, then you gotta eat inside, then you gotta put it in a tent, then it's outside in a tent, and inside in a tent, a plexiglass wall. What the fuck are we talking? Like this shit is so stupid. It's so stupid. And it's just like while we're all paying attention, or some people are paying attention to this bullshit that they're putting on TV, it's like no one's getting mad at them. No one's getting mad at them. No one's talking about them. It's them. They're the ones that are goosing everybody. And it's just like, the more that people on our, our, our ideological side, our side, in theory, the side of awareness, the more that these people are sitting here like, trust the flan? Trust the flan? Wait till April 1st? Like, what do you mean? Don't wait till April 1st? Shut the fuck up. Businesses are being destroyed right now. They're telling you to wear two diapers. They're telling you to wear two diapers. And you're like, oh, trust the flan. Wait till April 5th. What? Like, sh what? Two diapers, April 5th. Oh, like, you get, like, well, shut, like, shut the fuck up. The numbers are way the fuck down. They're goose in the first place. How come global deaths aren't up? Like, what are we doing? Has anyone been paying attention? April 1st, trust the flan? Jesus. You are being counterproductive to the cause. If these guys have as great of a plan as you are suggesting that they have, let them just execute it and let's talk about other shit. You understand? If you have a platform and you're out here saying to trust the flan, okay, let's just assume that we do trust the flan. We trust the flan. Pompeo's got the Blackhawk. They're going to come in. They're going to cuff Pelosi. They're going to put Eric Swalwell into a bus. They're going to take him to a military tribunal in the country of the popes, in the, in the fucking, in the Vatican country, in the middle of the country, or whatever. Whatever the fuck you're talking about in D.C. And they're going to arrest everybody because they've had this plan going for 50 years that JFK Jr. planned when he jumped out of his plane in 1990. Okay, fine. Let's assume that that's the case. Let's assume that you're right. Okay? Let's just fucking assume for a second that you're actually right. Okay. We agree. You and me have nothing to do with that. You and me can't do anything to, in, to engage this flan. We can't make the flan, we can't cook the flan, we can't eat the flan. I don't have a spoon, I don't have a fork, no one has flan. We had dessert, no one's hungry anymore. Let's talk about other shit. Let's talk about how to not wear diapers. Let's talk about how to call your congressperson and tell them they're a chooch factory. Let's figure out how to tell people that this is garbage. Let's try to strategize for the midterm election, you fucking corn pop. What the fuck are we talking about? Oh, it's a civil war. Like, what do you mean? It's a war. We're going to war. What war? What are you talking about? I'm just saying. This is fucking stupid. We're sitting out here and trusting the flan. All these people are distracted. Meanwhile, everybody on the left is laughing. They're like, ha, did you see Gab Gab's TikTok today? It's like, shit. It's like, these people are watching Gavin on TikTok. And we're over here eating flan. Wait till wait till July fifth. It's that's, that's the real Independence Day. It's like, what do you mean? Like, literally, what are you talking about? Like, this is stupid. You're being stupid, and you're not helping the cause. And then if I fucking I strongly I strongly resent, and I will go on the I will go on the record here and say that I strongly resent anybody suggesting that I am somehow not as good of an American by not trusting this fucking cockeyed plan. Do you understand? Like you're gonna say that I'm less I'm not as American, I'm not as patriotic, I'm not as whatever, because I don't trust this plan? Fuck off. Like I would think that I, I would think that at the, at the least I'm more patriotic because I'm trying to figure out the legal and legit way that we can actually get to the solution. I'm just saying. We're watching Gab Gab on TikTok while they destroy everybody, and we're gonna sit here and say trust the flan. <laughs> Sounds like Newsom's on TikTok. Yes. Uh, I'm just saying, this is counterproductive to our success. This is counterproductive to moving ahead, you know? It's like, a, it's like the military's got it. The military's got it all under control. It's like, do they though? 
Do they? Do you think that? Do you think how good of a plan? How good of a plan do they have when it's gone this far? All the businesses are closed. You know what I'm saying? The businesses are closed. Everybody's getting the juice. People are getting. People are getting. People are taking the juice and then they're getting clapped. People are losing their ability to generate income. And then at the end of all this, and then at the end of all this, at the end of all these small businesses getting crushed, they're going to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Oh, don't worry. It's going to happen over five years. You know what's going to happen in that five years? All those businesses that are going to start to watch, they're going to be like, all right, we're going to close next year when it hits the next tier up. We'll stay open, try to make as much as we can, and then we're out. That's it. Business closed. All of these things are only going to help the people at the top. It's only going to help the people at the top. How do people not understand this? The $15 minimum wage only helps big corporations, large corporations, and the people at the top. It only helps them. It destroys the people at the bottom. It destroys the low-paid paid workers. It destroys every high school kid's ability to get a job and gain education. It destroys all those jobs. It helps the higher-paid worker. It helps the skilled worker. It helps the people that already have money. This fucking college loan forgiveness bullshit, this college loan forgiveness bullshit, that's only going to help the people at the top. And people like us, people like you and me are going to subsidize college loans for fucking doctors and fucking lawyers and everybody else. And plus, what fucking idiot, what idiot would go and pay their fucking loans right now? What idiot would go and pay for college in cash right now? You'd have to be an idiot to do that. And you think that they're going to subsidize it and we're all going to pay for it? Every single one of us is going to pay for their college? Why the fuck would you pay for college with cash? You wouldn't. You're just going to wait till the government subsidizes it. This creates such a massive problem. It's such a moral hazard that is so financially destructive to everybody in the country. It is pure and utter destruction in the, in the highest form. This is pure socialism. It is complete reliance on the state. It's the destruction of America. Literally. We're watching it in real time. And people are like, trust the flan, bro. The, behind the fence, the fucking, the, it's owned by the, it's owned by, uh, it's owned by the Pope. The Pope owns Owns DC. It's like shut up. Meanwhile, like everybody is getting clapped. Everybody's getting bent over a cardboard box and clapped on a on a plexiglass throne. And it's just like, okay. Alright. Trust the plan, bro. DC is another country. Alright, man. Okay. Trust the plan. Hunker down. Hunker down. The good guys got it. Whatever you say. What I'm saying, and you could do whatever you want. What I'm saying is, <laughs> yo, this guy Vinny, Vinny in the comments is like, he's he's deep onto the queef boards. Whatever. I'm just saying, like, it's counterproductive. So what I'm saying is, and what I am suggesting is that we stop talking about the plan. We start talking about actual, legit, actual, real things that are happening in the world right now. The actual socialism, the actual government reliance that is occurring right now. We're all being, we're all being made to rely on the state. We're all being made to rely on the government to write us a paycheck, to give us a job. It's like, they're just bankrupting us. The, the minimum wage, <laughs> you know, the people in the comment, <laughs> yeah, I guess, whatever, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, is that like, these are all counterproductive, we, these are all counterproductive discussions that do not help us succeed. They don't help us win. They further create the divide. You're following a, you're following a, 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 a breadcrumb trail off of a cliff. You're following a breadcrumb trail off of a cliff. And it, is, and it is counterproductive to all of our success. They're shutting down these businesses. They're taking everybody's freedom. They're taking the money away. They're making socialism a part of America. They're trying to push universal basic income. They got Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg couldn't even manage a sidewalk project in South Bend, Indiana. This guy runs a $87 billion a year budget. $87 billion. The transportation budget in South Bend, Indiana was $10 million a year. And he went from $10 million to $87 billion. $87 billion. $87 billion. I'm just saying. It's like, are we not, like, are we entertained? 
You got Fouch saying to wear two diapers. You got Boo. You got John Kerry as the envoy of climate. Yo, I'm just saying, this is like, this is so bad. It's so bad. And it's like not going to get any better. And it certainly is not going to get any better if everybody's just trusting the flan. And they push for these like, if I see people talking about the teachers, they're talking about these teachers unions like these teachers are so virtuous. These teachers are destroying these kids' education. They don't care about the kids. These teachers don't care about the kids. They care about staying home and working. Yo, it's a risk to go to work. I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be crass. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's a risk to go to work. You take a risk when you go to work. You get in your car, that's a risk. You drive to work, that's a risk. You walk out the you walk on the street, you go to lunch, that's a risk. You take risks to go to work. That's what work is. That's why it has value, right? It's a variety of different value. So to think that you're like you're a young, healthy school teacher and you can't go like what do you mean, dude? These kids these kids lives are being permanently stunted by this imagine you're you're in your core learning years and you have to learn on a computer one of the most significant and one of the most crucial elements of young life is social acclimation acclimating yourself to social environments dealing with people that slap you around on the on the on the playground that make fun of you that let you know that the world's not colors and rainbows that you're not at home alone with your parents you're out there in the world learning how to be social, how to socialize. You're learning how to learn just as much as you're learning how to learn other people. You're learning how to operate in the world. It's not a cushy bubble. It's not safe all the time. It's not going to, you're not protected. It's it, like, it's just like these kids need to go to school. They're like, oh, our goal for 100 days is to get kids back to school for one day a week. What do you mean? So the clap is not there on Monday? The, the, it's not there on Monday, but it's there Tuesday through Friday? Like, what do you mean, dude? Let the kids go to school. Like, you psychopath. Like, what? I'm just saying. It's like, and like I said, and not to keep, not to keep circle, not to keep doing the circle backy, but like, you're going to trust the flan while the kids can't go to school? Like, what do you mean? On top of all that, the kid put give them, like do you got these kids wearing diapers? You know how dirty these diapers are? Like my diaper has been sitting in the seat of my car for months. I've washed it several like I put it on for five seconds, I walk in the door, I'm, I like hold my breath. It's just like stupid. You got kids wearing diapers, they can't socialize, you're dehumanizing people by hiding their face and their smile, you're making people just look at each other like a bunch of chooches, you can't talk to anybody, you can't, every musician, every person that works in live music, every person that works in events is getting destroyed, they're printing money off the hook, money printers going brrr all day long, they're printing more money into circulation than has ever been in circulation ever. You got all these kids that are in the core earning years of their life, or the core learning years of their life, social learning years of their life. The th you know who I really feel bad for? You know who I really, really feel bad for? Is high school seniors. Kids that were seniors in high school last year, especially kids that are sport are into sports. If you were if you were practicing to get a college to be a college football player or a college basketball player or a college volleyball player or a college athlete and you were in your senior year of high school and you got clapped through all this, your life just changed. The whole trajectory of your life just changed. You're in peak physical shape at the peak of your career. You're about to go into a next move and you just got clapped. And people are out here like, yo, trust the flan. It's like, no, dude. On top of all that, you got these people doing psychotic things. They're putting, they're, you, got, you got biological men competing in women's sports. I'm not hating on tees, I'm just saying there's a biological advantage to being a biological man that's now a woman. Okay, I'll call you a woman, I'll say you're a woman, I'll respect you or whatever. I'm just saying that is a biological disadvantage. That's destroying women's sports. That's destroying women's physical achievements. You're not going to get a woman that's going to be able to ride a bicycle as fast as a biological man. I don't care how many I don't care how many hormones you take. Boxing, MMA? Like what? I don't know, man. You're just destroying women. It's like women are being destroyed. They're being bamboozled. So you got all these women getting clapped? You got businesses getting clapped? You got kids getting clapped? No one can learn. If a kid's home from school, what are their parents doing? They're, they're at home, not working, not being productive. 
Not because you're just fear mongering. Fear, 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 fear. You're just keeping everybody in this perpetual state of fear. You gotta wear diapers. Joey Baseman said that we're gonna have to wear diapers until next year. Like, what? Bro. You know what really twists my beanbag and just ties it in a knot and, and, and takes it to the circus and blows it up into an inflatable toy? I live in Florida. It's 82 degrees outside today. 82 degrees. I was out walking my dog earlier today and there was a guy walking alone with a diaper on outside in nature alone with a diaper on. There's chemicals in that diaper. I'm just saying, I'm okay, whatever. I can't, I can't even say this shit. I'm, my, my fucking account's gonna get zapped because I'm saying that fucking, he's like, no, say, you can't say what, I'm like, okay. So it's like, all right, sorry, I was just kidding. That was just a joke. Just kidding, guys. Joking. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Whatever. So it's like the guy's walking outside alone wearing a diaper. You watch the Super Bowl. There's a commercial with, or with her, the puppy bowl or whatever. I don't even know what it was. With, with Dr. Jill. And she's like, do you like dogs? I love dogs. Do you walk your dog? I love walking my dogs. If you're walking your dog, put on your diaper. Go outside with your diaper. Da, da, da. Put on your diaper. It's like, dog, no. What do you mean? Like, what do you literally mean? Stop telling people to wear a diaper outside alone in nature. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And people are doing it. That's what's even more amazing. Like, oh, bro, no. Like, literally, no. I'm just saying. Wow. Jill cut a. People are talking about the hearts on the lawn. Wow. Jill put hearts on the lawn. Wow. Like, <laughs> maybe Jill should have been. <laughs> Whatever, I can't, I can't even, I can't even. Wow, and then when they add, yo, yo, you guys, let me just, I'm just gonna, let me just, let me just, let me just pull it back for a second. Joey Diaper has been in office for like three weeks, four weeks. Did you see what Joe was wearing on the White House lawn when him and, when him and Dr. Jilly were looking at the hearts? He's like sitting there drinking a cup of coffee like, yeah. He looked like he looked like he looked like he was trying to look like Maverick from Top Gun. He's like you're like talking to his diaper outside in nature with his wife that he lives with. And he's just like <sighs> And there's just got like a cup of coffee in his hand with the diaper on. The diaper's on! The coffee's in the hand. Diaper and he's wearing like jeans he's wearing like a dirty pair of jeans and like a pair of, and like a set of boots. And like a, some some leather some leather jacket, like he was just like he just flew a, like he just flew in one of those planes with the freaking with the glass bubble, and he like had it open. He had the scarf; it was blowing in the wind. He was like a, he was like Snoopy in the plane with the with the goggles. I'm like, what is this guy wearing? I didn't see Donnie in in an outfit like that not one time. I don't think I ever seen Donnie in a pair of jeans in his life. I swear to God, Trump sleeps in a suit. I love that. I love that. This dude comes out wearing a tie. This dude's sharp. You know what I'm saying? At least he's got a butt. I'm not I'm saying I don't want to like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm just saying. He looks like he just flew. <laughs> he looks like he just was driving, driving a plane like this. <laughs> like he's driving a propeller plane. Like with a scarf. Like the scarf's blown in the wind. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, with the coffee. It's like, what are you doing? How are you drinking that coffee? Uh, it's like, <laughs> I just dump it through the diaper and then I squeeze the diaper into my like uh... they saw a video the other day where he's like he's like <laughs> he's sitting in the fight he's like sitting in the video in the office on video and he's like I'm wearing a diaper and it's important that you wear a diaper I could take it off but I think it's important it's like bro we get it we get it. You say ad nauseum that everyone should wear a diaper. We got the message, bro. We heard it. We get it with the diaper. We, we get it. Take it off when you're speaking. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so much virtue. Uh, it's like, we can't hear you, bro. Imagine, like, we, we literally can't hear you, guy. 
Jilly, Jilly, and then he, and then when they're on the lawn, they ask Jill like, what? <laughs> the reporter's like, why did you do this stupid thing? And she's like, you know, just to bring a little joy. It's like, what joy? No one's got joy from that. Absolutely zero people are like, look at those hearts. Oh my God, I'm so full of joy today. Like what? Meanwhile, they're like, their house is burning to the ground. Their bank account is empty. Their business is clapped. They're buying a hundred dollars sheets of plexiglass to separate somebody from a fa- Have you seen this plexiglass? Like what planet are you living on? This is plexiglass so stupid. I, like you walk up to like a, to like a fucking, like a, like the entrance to a restaurant. There's a plexiglass and you're just like, the plexiglass is like right here. It's like a, it's like the side, it's like the plexiglass is like this. And like you walk up to the plexiglass and you're like, hi, I'll have a table for three. <laughs> like, it's like, what do you mean? This is stupid. I got a diaper. She's got a diaper. The restaurant's loud. There's a piece of plexiglass. This, uh, like, every single person's like, can I have, like, can I have a table? For-? It's like, what? Do you guys understand how these uh, plexiglass even work? Like, why are you even doing this? Meanwhile, the people at the plexiglass factory are like, yes. <laughs> it's like, yo, let's get plexi. Keep everybody in a baba. Keep everyone in a, keep everybody dehumanized in a baba. It's like, everybody's just like, can I have a table for two? Like, let me lean around the bubble because I can't hear you because it's a freaking plexiglass. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then through all this stuff, they're just like, trust the flam. It's like, okay. Okay. Whenever t- I see I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Somebody's like, invest in plexiglass stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the world is trash. Everything is garbage. You should see how the DMV is with plexiglass. Yeah, I should. I haven't been to the DMV in a long time. Thank God. <laughs> the kids in the overflow facilities. <laughs> yeah, big facts. Large facts, really. Everything is trash. What a bag of what a bag of light Harrell rice. <laughs> People like invest in diapers. <laughs> I'm deaf in one ear. The plexiglass and the diapers are the worst. Are the worst. I can't hear shit. Yeah. Yep. I just don't. I just don't understand. I think it's all a bunch of malarkey, corn pop. I think everything is garbage, and the world is on fire. Like Joe's on the thing. Like. I'm wearing the mask. It's very important that I wear the mask. Who? Me? Like, we can't hear you, Joe. Uh, Everything's garbage. I'm liking this standing up. This is nice. I can, like, freely move. I can freely move. Whatever. Everything's garbage. Uh, it's so funny. I'm watching the freaking... <laughs> I'm watching the... Uh, it's funny because I can't... For whatever reason, because the badge thing and this other thing, like on my Instagram screen, it only shows one comment at a time, so they like run through fast. So I have the Instagram up on my computer and I can see the comments and I see what you guys are seeing as you comment and you're commenting on something that happened like 20 seconds ago, so it's just funny. I was like sitting here watching myself put the diaper on, and I'm like, it's, just, it's pretty funny. The world is trash. Everybody's like, I keep seeing questions about what I'm drinking. I'm drinking so much. This is, I've been talking for like two, I've been talking for two hours straight. I've just been zapping. That's why um, I'm drinking water. First, I drank this. This is a spin drift. A tea, iced tea, half lemonade, half iced, or half lemon, half iced tea. Then I drank this. This is a sparkling strawberry water. And I'm drinking water. Somebody the other day, somebody made a comment the other day on one of the live streams and they were like, (laughs) it might have been after I posted, it might have been after I posted the live stream. Uh, it was like after I posted the live stream the next day and I woke up and I saw the comment list and someone was like, 
Somebody was like, uh, they were like, yo, <laughs> they're like, this was unwatchable. You were, you were drinking, you were like taking a sip every five seconds or something. And I was like, oh my bad, bro. <laughs> I was like, my light Harold bad, like I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god, the world is garbage. I'm gonna message Ian and see if he's online right now. And see, see he, he was saying that he wanted to go on like way earlier, but I'm gonna message him and see if he's still on, but he might not be. He's like shadow banned, like a mother. There he is, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I'm staying hydrated, like, because I'm talking forever. I'm just going to message him. I don't know if he's online. He's, he may not be online or whatever, but anyways. Um, somebody goes drinking water is racist. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Or at least if it was made out to be, you know? Because everything is garbage and the world is trash and nothing can be trusted anymore because the earth is on fire. You know, for anybody that doesn't already, and I hope that you do, and I'm sure that you probably do because you're you're super ultra woke and you know what's really, really good out in the world. If you don't already follow me on YouTube and Facebook, please make sure that you follow me on YouTube and Facebook. I really need to I really need to make sure that I get those accounts growing in a four to nine. So on YouTube on YouTube, you can't monetize videos on YouTube until you hit 2,000 watch hours. Right now, I or 4,000 watch hours in the last 12 months. Um, I have 2,148 public watch hours. So for example, if you went and watched a YouTube video that was an hour long and just let it play through or you watched it or whatever, um, that would give me another hour. So every little bit counts. So if you wouldn't mind, follow me on YouTube, watch one of my long videos on there, watch one of the podcasts or whatever. I need to get those public watch hours up so I can turn monetization on on YouTube while it's still possible. Are they even going to let me have it? I don't know, but whatever. But all those, all that support helps make this possible because it helps keep me going so I can spend more time doing this. Somebody said, uh, the YouTube monetization models. Yeah, the model, the monetization models do suck, and that absolutely is correct. And the really the most crucial thing, the thing that's the thing that generates the most return for this project, the thing that helps, the thing that helps support the project the most is the merch store. But the other thing is this: these badges. It's Thirty-seven people bought badges tonight. That's amazing. I really appreciate that so much. Thirty-seven people bought badges in this chat tonight. That's amazing. That's the type of stuff that it's like. Okay, if 37 badges sell in a live stream, it's like I could do more live streams, you know? It's like I'm making videos, I'm doing the best I can there, I'm making new merch, and then to see you guys supporting the live stream, I just want you to know I really appreciate that. To all the 37 people that bought the badges, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. It means the world. Thank you so kindly for doing that. And to everybody else that can't, I understand. Just you being here is appreciated as well. So thank you so much. And if anybody wants merch, bobbysauce.com is the spot. People are saying, what's a badge? I don't know how it looks on your end, but like here in the chat, you can buy badges. I don't know where they are. See, Chula Walker just bought a badge. Thank you, Chula Walker, I appreciate that. Apparently you can buy a badge and it gives you these hearts next to your name. And that just goes to me. I don't know how much of it goes to me. I don't really know, but it's a way to support the channel. So thank you so much to the 38 people that have bought the badges. That's really appreciated. I thank you so much for doing that. I don't know. I think what the badges do are just ways of supporting the channel. It just allows you to have some stars by your name to show that you're that you're supporting. I think that's what it is. I don't know. Um, but I honestly don't know. I don't know what it looks like from your end. So um, thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate it. So that's what's up. I really appreciate that. That's really super cool. And a lot of people have donated on Venmo and stuff like in other live streams and whatnot. So I appreciate that so much. It's, it's super helpful. So... We've gone over that the world is garbage. We've gone over that Earth is trash. We've gone over that that it's entirely a show. We've gone on. We've gone over the fact that that we're watching a charade. We've talked about. We've talked about the fact that the only way out of this is through conversations. We've gone over the fact that mindset, I think, is the way to move forward through all this stuff. I think that that is the game. Thank you, meme. Mem myself in four. Thank you so much for buying the badge. I appreciate it. Three stars. Look at that. Or three hearts. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so it's just like, I still think that the most important thing through all this is to like, 
If you trust the flan, fine. Trust the flan. I'm with you on the flan trusting. Awesome. Rock out, trust the flan. I'm with you on that. I hope that the flan happens. I hope I hope Donnie and Pompeo repel from a Black Hawk and Pelosi, you know, and Pelosi gets, you know, gets goosed. Like, I, I hope that that occurs. I just don't think that's going to happen. And let's just assume that it does. I certainly hope it does. Thank you, Kathy, for the badge. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope that, I hope that they, I hope that they do all that stuff. I hope that everybody comes to justice. I hope if all this bad stuff happened, that it gets resolved. I really do. I certainly hope that that's the case. It's just that while we're trusting the flan, can we all just maybe like unanimously agree to maybe like start thinking and talking about other stuff that's going to be beneficial? You know, like let's talk about the midterms. Let's talk about not trusting the flan. Let's talk about getting these businesses back open. Let's talk about writing a letter to your Congress people, calling your Congress people to be like, yo, open the business. Let's talk about talking to people online. Let's talk about not listening to AOC. Let's talk about not watching the mainstream media, not buying the New York Times, not buying the Wall Street Journal, supporting companies like the Epic Times, supporting like non like nonpartisan journalism supporting creators that are spreading the information and the knowledge that you love let's talk about not consuming information that doesn't produce for you that doesn't make you productive let's talk about mindset let's talk about operating at the highest possible level let's talk about outsmarting these these goons let's talk about figuring out how to consume content that supports the ideals that we like let's not talk about the flan let's not talk about the flan bro you know, let's not talk about the flan, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's other things. Like, people are getting clapped, Pop. Okay? There's a lot of clapping happening. So it's like, if we, so it's like, start with yourself. It's like, fortify your finance, financial position. Get a side hustle. Get your bread stacking. Figure out what you're doing. Open a retirement account. Invest in some stocks. Diversify your bonds. Make sure that you got cash in the bank. Make sure you got a, make sure you got cash reserves. Get rid of get rid of the available cash and buy assets. Buy real estate. Buy stocks. Buy something that can help you level up. Probably don't buy Bitcoin. Probably don't buy cryptocurrency. Maybe if you want to, that's fine. Maybe you make some money, roll the dice, that's fine. But like Fortify your financial position. Get a side hustle. You, you don't know what you're doing? Work online. Find learn a new skill. Go on YouTube. Find a new find a hobby that'll produce you money. Take take an audit take an audit of what you put into your brain. Just like what you put into your body. Just like what you put into your mind dictates so many things. Change how you look at the world. Change your perspective on what's happening around you. Change the conversations that you have from day to day. Look at the people that you talk to. Look at the people that you associate with. Look at the people that you're spending time with. Maybe think about how maybe you shouldn't spend time with those people. Maybe you should spend time with different people. Maybe you should find some new people. Maybe you should do something different than what you're doing, right? I heard this awesome quote on the Real AF podcast today. It said, change your friends or change your friends. It's like, change your friends or change your friends, you know? So I'm just saying. That should be the conversation. The conversation should be self-improvement. It should be get cheese. It should be figure out how to produce value for other people. It should be figure out how to make investments that'll help you get ahead. It's buy assets. It's buy cash flow. It's invest in cash flow. Learn about what cash flow is. Learn about how to make more money. Learn about what the stock market is. Learn about an IRA. Learning about learn about opening an IRA. Learn the difference between a traditional IRA and a and a and a, and a Roth IRA. If you don't know what it is, don't wait to find out. Go on YouTube and type in What's the difference between an IRA, a traditional IRA, and a Roth IRA? Write Google, give a gagal, or give a duck duck go, and type in pros of a Roth IRA, cons of a Roth IRA, pros of a traditional IRA, cons of a traditional IRA. Some people swear by the Roth. Some people swear by the traditional. Do whatever the hell you want. Use your own logic to determine what makes sense for you. I'm a traditional cat. Some people swear by the Roth. Okay, have a Roth, have a Roth burger. I don't care. I'm I'm a traditional boy. I'm a traditional gal. All right. I'm a traditional day. I like the traditional. I like the traditional IRA. I like to build up. I like to build up that non-taxable and get clapped when I'm 65, dog. That's what I'm trying to do. Google bought DuckDuckGo. Is that true? How could that be true? Is that true? No way. No, I don't see that. I don't see that anywhere. 
whatever. I'm not demonizing Google. I'm just saying. So whatever. I, I, I like the traditional IRA. I like, I like, I like the stock market. I like cash flowing assets. What I like even more than all those things is investing money into yourself, into your business. If you got cash sitting on the sidelines, make your business better. Figure out how to make more money. If you drive for Uber, if you drive for Uber Eats, make it better. Figure out how to do it better. If you drive for Uber, here's a, here's a free, piece of, free piece of advice. If you drive for Uber and you don't have little mini water bottles in your car, you're not thinking ahead. You're not, you don't know, you don't understand how to create your own luck. I'm just saying. When I find one of those, when somebody gives me one of those little water bottles in an Uber ride, I easily tip them five times the value of the water. Every single time. I've never drank a water in an Uber and not paid them considerably more than the cost of that water. Ever. No one, well, you're just going to get in an Uber and you're going to drink somebody's water and then you're going to be like, thanks, peace. Like, what? You're not going to do that. The probability that you would do that is so extremely low. That's creating your own luck. That's the difference between people that operate and hit at a high level and people that don't. Create your own luck. Invest. Invest in stuff. Create luck. Buy, invest in your business. You know? Yeah, water bottles, a charger. How easy would that be? A cell phone charger is like $5. $10. Have all the chargers, Jabron. You know what I'm saying? Like, have the chargers. I'm just saying. It just seems so obvious to me. You know what's even better? Make sure that the Uber smells good, Pop. Spray a little, you know what I'm saying? Spray some air freshener in there, Chooch. Like, what are you doing? So simple. How many times, you guys, you, you, you guys tell me. Let's take a little poll. I'm gonna take, let's do a poll. How many of you have been in an Uber or a Lyft and the guy or gal or they or whatever or specious or the, the freaking giraffe or whatever that was driving the Uber or the Lyft? How many of you have been in an Uber or a Lyft and the driver complained about how much, how little money they make in the Uber or Lyft? If you have had this happen to you, hit us with a thumbs up. Hit us with a thumbs up. Drop some thumbs up in the chat if you've been in an Uber or a Lyft and the driver has complained about how little money they make driving for Uber or Lyft or how they don't get enough tips or how the tips aren't high enough or whatever. And that exact same person didn't have mints or gum or water or you don't want to talk about that because you're just in a car. You're just trying to get there. I empathize with you. I empathize with you. I really do. But don't complain about that. That's not my fault, dog. I didn't make you drive for Uber, bro. Create your own luck. Stop complaining. Look how many thumbs ups. Like, what are you doing? Complaining about how much you don't get tipped? Like, shut up, dude. That's stupid. So stupid. That has happened to me so many times. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. You're certainly not making me want to tip you more, dude. Because I got to sit there and be like, wow, that sucks. And like, I get it. But create your own luck, dog. Like, give me a mint. Have you ever been in a bathroom when somebody gives you a fucking mint? You just like feel obligated. The mint's like a penny. It's like one penny. And you're like, all right, here's a dollar. You just got a five, you just got a 50 X return on the fucking mint. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, OC girl, I've never been an Uber where the drivers complain. Cool, that's awesome. I've, most other people have. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Um, I don't know, I have. It seems like a lot of people have. But whatever, I feel like that happens often. Yeah, give me a mint. <laughs> that's right. So I'm just saying, it's like, that's the type of stuff. We just have this, like, we just have this victimhood mentality where everybody just complains about everything. <clears throat> Get a Jolly Rancher. That's right, Elizabeth, that's right. <clears throat> Give me a Jolly Rancher, dog. A Jolly Rancher is cost you 10 cents. Give me a Jolly Rancher. Give me a Werther's Original. If I got into a cab and you had gum, or an Uber and you had gum, I would be like, my man, if you gave me a pack of gum, forget about it. I'd give you five bucks on the spot. I'd be like, five bucks, gum. Gum is key, so key. 
I would I would totally give you five dollars for gum. You know, a pack of gum is twenty five cents. I don't know, man. I'm just saying that's the type of mentality. That's the difference between people that hit and people that don't. It's a difference of mindset, pop. It's a difference of creating your own luck. It's a difference of figuring out how to succeed in the environment that you're in. But everybody doesn't do that. They just complain. Oh, the government. Oh, Uber. Big bad Uber. Big bad Lyft. They're stealing all my prop. Dog, you just walked out of your house, turned your phone on, flipped a switch pop, and now you have income flowing in your direction. You're going to complain about that? Don't do it then. Don't drive for Uber, bro. Don't drive for Lyft. Get a different job. No one's making you drive for Uber. Get another job. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Everybody just complains. Complain, complain, complain. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Look at me. Poor me. Woe is me. AOC. I'm a victim. I need money. Government is bad. My landlord is bad. I can't pay my rent. Dog, you can't pay your rent because you have an iPhone 11S in a fucking $73 case and you have a $400 pair of fucking pumps, you chooch. You have a fucking pair of shoes that's too expensive. And I'm not saying about that about everybody. I'm just saying some people. I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying some people. All right? It's like if you have an iPhone and you are complaining that you can't buy food, sell your iPhone. Sell your iPhone. So it's just like, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. The other thing that, that like is crazy, it's like, I don't know. I, I feel for people's financial woes, but it's like, bro, you're supposed to have a rainy day fund. Like you're, that's your responsibility. Have money set aside for a rainy day. That's what it's for. That's what you're supposed to have. Like, stop being a victim. Change your situation. Okay, so now, like, figure out a different way. Did you know that Amazon was hiring during the clamdemic? They were hiring. Okay, you don't have a job? Did you apply at Amazon? I'm not saying work at Amazon. I'm just saying some people were hiring. I've given an example on a previous live stream about washing my car. While every single thing was going nuts with the clam dem, I was like sitting here like, I wish somebody would come wash my car. If some dude from the neighborhood knocked on my door and was like, yo, I live here in the neighborhood. I lost my job. I'm Joey. Do you have any things around the house I could do to help you out? I would have been like, yeah. I would have literally been like, yeah, dude. My shed needs my shed needs to be cleaned up. Sweep the shed, organize my shed. I'll give you 50 bucks on the spot. Create your own luck, chooch. You know what I'm saying? It's like create your own luck, doc. I don't know. I'm just saying. Like if somebody came to my door and asked me that, I would have been like, "Yes. I do." That's opportunity. That's money sitting here waiting for you to come and get it. Did you do it? Did you do that? Or did you just complain about it? I'm just saying. Yeah, shovel some snow. Go to the go to the places that have snow in front. Be like, you need your show snow shovel. How did kids do it back in the day? That's how they did it. You have stuff around your house, sell it. If you have stuff in your house, go sell it. Find things around the house and sell it. Downgrade. Sell your car. Get a cheaper car. Sell your assets. Sell your computer. Downgrade your cell phone. Cancel Netflix. Buy rice. Buy beans. I don't know, dude. Buy some beans and rice. They're pretty cheap. <laughs> if I lived in Florida, I'd wash your car. Hell yeah. <laughs> Biohacker mother, how do you spell chooch? You spelled it right, chooch. I have shirts that say chooch on it on bobbysauce.com. <laughs> That's all everyone does is complain and make videos. I guess. I'd wash your car for a pack of mints. That's funny. <laughs> if 
People like to sit in dirty diapers. Elizabeth said, should we wait for a correction in the market before investing? Look, I, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't speak on this matter with any experience other than my own, but I will tell you this. In the last five years, there has been a variety of times where I was like, wow, the stock market's at record highs. Maybe I should wait. Here's the most, here, here's what I think is the most, is the best answer I can give you. Nobody can time the market. You can't time the market. If you could time the market, you would be rich. So here's what I'm saying. The market as a whole is exactly what it sounds like. It's a market, right? It's all the businesses. It's everything, right? Okay. If the market is up or the market is down or there's a market correction or a market this or a market that, you're looking at it in totality. Think about it in terms of like an individual business because that's what you're really buying. You're not buying the market. You're buying an individual business unless you're buying an index fund. You're buying an individual business. So think about a stock the same way that you would think about buying a car wash or that you would think about buying a flower shop or you would think about buying a, a, a piece of some farmland or how you would think about buying um, a salon, a nail salon, right? Look at the individual business. Okay, if everything in the town is going to hell, but you look at the barber shop and you're like, well, people are still gonna need to get their hair cut just because this is going away. Like, will this business succeed in this environment? So when I look at the market, I think to myself, what is gonna continue despite a market slowdown? Cell phones, that's why I have stock in Verizon. I pay Verizon, I like Verizon. Verizon pays a dividend, I'm not gonna sell it. If the market goes down or the market corrects, I don't care, because I'm not gonna sell it. I'm just gonna hold it. I'm a long hold chooch. I'm one of those chooches that buys and never sells. I buy, never sell, that's what I do. That's just my strategy, you do whatever you want. I buy, never sell, that's what I do. I buy and I never sell. And when I say never, I don't mean never. I don't mean I'm gonna go to my grave with Verizon stock on my account like a, like a chooch master. I'm just saying I buy, never sell. I'm a long hold, long investment guy. If the investments go down or the investments go up, I don't care because I'm not gonna sell it. I'll sell it later. I'll sell it 10 years from now. If the business goes under, which I don't think it's gonna, I think I'll get some indications because I have Verizon service, right? So I look at my bill. They're, they're dinging me on this. Their customer service starts to suck. They don't have the right phones. The, the, I go to the Verizon store and it's shitty. It's dirty. The employees are mean, whatever. I'll know when shit's starting to get weird because I have Verizon, right? So I invest in Verizon. I'm like, long term, will there be more cell phones? Yes. Will more people be using a mobile device? Yes. Will there be more mobile phones that are coming out? Yes. Are people gonna buy mobile phones probably before they buy the vast majority of other things? Yes, right? So all those bing, 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 I'm gonna invest in Verizon. I don't care if the market goes up or down. I like Verizon. I invest in Verizon. I know Verizon. I understand Verizon. I don't care about the market. I'm not gonna wait for a correction because I don't know how to time it because no one knows how to time it. So I buy Verizon, I collect my dividend, and I move on with my merry way. And five years from now, I think it's probably safe to say that Verizon will be up. I don't know. That's just my guess. I don't know. I'm a long hold person. But I'm probably not going to sell it five years from now. I'm probably going to sell it 25 years from now. 20 years from now. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know. That's just what I'm going to do. So whatever. So let's think about other things. What are what other are things are going to survive through a, through a pandemic? Or, or I mean, through a um, through a downturn in the market, what things are going to survive? What things are going to make the same amount of money, or a similar amount of money, or rebound as a result of the market, quote unquote, market being down? What's the type of stuff that's going to survive in the event that that's the case? Things that don't necessarily rely on other things, really, right? Think about things that just re that just rely on their own, just straight away. I buy technology stocks. I understand technology, I like technology, I think technology is gonna grow, I think the technology stocks are grossly undervalued, so I invest in things that I think are gonna get bigger no matter whether the market goes up or down. So I, one of my largest positions is Uber. I love Uber, I take Uber, I buy Uber Eats often. And if the market went to hell, I'm still taking Ubers, I'm not gonna go to Miami and drive if I'm gonna drink alcohol. I'm not gonna go to the air, I can't, I can't, I can't walk to the airport with my freaking suitcase. I'm not going to get a ride to the airport. When I go to the airport, it costs money to park my car at the airport. Okay? It costs money to park my car at the airport. So how the fuck am I going to get to the airport 
and park if if I if I if I'm not going to park there. If I park my car at the airport, it costs eighteen dollars a day or whatever it costs. So it's like I can't drive to the fucking airport, no matter what. Okay. I'm never going to be driving to the airport. I'm not going to get a ride to the airport. I'm probably not going to get a ride to the airport. Not at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 10 p.m. when I get in. I fly in at 12 and then well, who's going to pick me up at midnight, right? So it's like I need Uber. I need a ride. I need a lift. I need ride sharing. I need it. If I'm going to go out and drink and I don't want to get arrested, I need it. If I'm going to go to the airport and I don't want to park my car there and cost a lot of money, I need it, right? So if I need it, then the market being up or down doesn't dictate the price or value of Uber. Uber is going to st- Stay cooking. It's going to stay cooking because when I get home at 12 p.m., I'm exhausted. I just got off my flight. I just took my Uber back to my house. I'm going to order something on Uber Eats and someone's going to deliver it to my door and I'm going to eat it. You know, I can't go to the grocery store. The grocery store is closed, which means I need to get it from a restaurant. Well, I'm tired. I'm going to order from Uber Eats. Uber Eats is the best. I'm right on Uber Eats. I have an Uber membership, right? I like Uber. Uber's good. I, I pay for Uber Eats. I like Uber, the company. I like the driving. They don't have any Bitcoin. I think that the CEO is a great guy. I think he's really smart. If you look at the pedigree of the CEO of Uber and all of the moves that he's making, they seem very smart. When you go online and you look at what Uber does, the businesses that they invest in, the businesses that they buy, the strategic moves that they make. During the original, the beginning of the pandemic, they were talking about being more profitable. What'd they do? They closed their fucking shop in Los Angeles. They're like, the rent was too high. That's a good financial move. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy about Uber, right? Because I'm like, these people know what they're doing. So that's the type of thing that, that's what makes me buy Uber. So it's like, why, what does the market have to do with that? Nothing. If I look at the value of Uber, which is measured by the market cap, the market cap of a company, and then you look at the profits of that company, or what you believe will be the profits, like the trajectory, like the reduction in losses, over time, you're like, this company's gonna be profitable eventually. So it's like, okay, I like Uber, I'm gonna spend more money on Uber, I'm probably gonna spend more money on Uber next year than I did this year, so it's just like, I buy Uber stock, right? That's one of my largest positions. The market does not dictate to me whether or not Uber is gonna be more valuable as a company. If the market goes down, the market goes down, but I'm not gonna sell it. I'm just gonna hold it for 10 years. That's why I like Uber, so I have Uber stock. What's the largest, what's one of the largest companies in the world? Amazon. Who competes with Amazon? Let's just see. Like, I, I don't I don't have any Amazon stock, it's very expensive. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go on Google. I have never done this before, but I'm just gonna give it a gal and see if, if I find anything. I'm gonna say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google right now for the first time, who competes with Amazon? I'm just going to do that because I don't know, right? I don't know. I've never done this before. I mean, I know because I know, but I've never done this search. So let's just, let's just follow this search. Who are Amazon's main competitors? Okay. Okay. So this one's like this one's talking about like the th- in theory who are their biggest pet- competitors, not actually who they are. Like who are the who are the companies? I'm looking for the companies. Let's see. The first article. See all these ones are so literally the first thing it says: e-commerce competitors, online stores. The e-commerce industry is growing at an exponential rate. In fact, retail e-commerce is expected to reach $4.8 trillion by next year, by 2021. Last year was 4.1, right? Okay, so you have a 2% increase annually in e-commerce sales. You have companies that are growing and competing with Walmart. Who competes with Walmart? Companies that run e-commerce stores. I use Shopify for my e-commerce. I'm a web developer. I understand how e-commerce works. I've built a number of different websites using e-commerce platforms. Shopify is the best one that I've ever seen. I bought stock in Shopify. You follow? So when you're looking at when you're looking at stocks that you want to invest or you want to buy in, what you're buying is a piece of a company, a company that you potentially believe in. So I have stock in Shopify because I like Shopify. I use it, I buy it, I pay it, I write that I Hit my, they hit my credit card every month. I sell my merch there. It's a great product. It's a great company. I like the company. It's great. I buy stock and Shopify. Does that, do I care what the market does? No, because what you're investing is, is that individual company. If the market goes down, Shopify is probably still gonna be making money. That's what I'm saying. That's how I invest. That's just what I do. That's my thought.
Somebody said, I like Lyft. I have stock in Lyft as well. Because I like ride sharing. Somebody's like, why are your lives so long? I don't know. <laughs> Randy said, Shopify is the new GameStop right now. I don't really know how you could possibly infer that, but yeah, I guess, maybe. I mean, why? Why do you say that? Are you saying that because GameStop is, because get, people are pumping GameStop? If people are pumping Shopify, okay. Shopify has a, has a much better business model than GameStop. Fundamentally, Shopify is healthy as a motherfucker. Their revenue is growing like crazy. So I, I, I really don't think there's any comparison between Shopify and GameStop. Stop. I mean, if you could tell me what that comparison is, I would listen to it, but I don't know. I don't think so. Um, so... That's my philosophy on investing in stocks. I believe in long holding. If you're gonna invest in stocks, I would say buy and long hold, don't sell. That's my game, buy and hold. Buy and long hold, I think that's the best strategy. Make sure that you have an IRA. Have an investment account, put your money aside and set it aside. I'm asking because Ian always gets cut off after an hour. There's certain limitations that it's Instagram gives for certain accounts for whatever for whatever reason my account is allowed to do longer live streams i don't know what that is but i mean i've been i've been a good i've been a good little chooch so maybe they're just letting me win this badge thing is awesome this 40 i 43 people bought badges tonight thank you guys so much for doing that um the badges i got a notification about the badges a couple days ago or no 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 not a couple days ago yesterday I got when I woke up in the morning it said you can now sell badges on Instagram and I was like fucking hell yeah what's a badge I mean I'd seen them on other big accounts but like big accounts like um the first time I ever saw badges on Tommy Lauren's account and she has like 1.6 million followers just some some astronomically high number and I saw that people were buying badges and I was like that's so awesome that people are supporting her like right in real time that's so killer um, and I was like, I wonder how many followers I have to have to have badges. And like, here we are. Now we got badges. That's awesome. Could it be because I always had the Venmo and the and the Cash App in here and people were donating that way? I don't know. I have no idea. Why did they turn on badges for me? I have no clue. But for whatever reason, I got badges now. And that's fucking awesome. So the fact that people can, can donate and support the channel right from the chat, that's amazing. It's so cool. And people are saying, yeah, it's so easy to buy. So you don't have to leave and like send a Venmo. I had a bunch, a bunch of times people would Venmo me like after the live stream ended. So I was like, hell yeah, like thank you so much for that. So it's so amazing that that's on. So it's just like, that's badass. I think that's super cool. So it's like, you know what else I have stock in? Not to, not to, not to, not to beat, beat the stock stick. Like I have stock in Facebook. Facebook's a great company. Uh, like I don't have to agree with every single thing and every single policy decision that they make, but you know, like Facebook's a good company. They're making great profits. They make extremely lit profits. And then here, and then here you have Instagram, a product that's allowing me to connect to all you guys. I mean, that's great. That's a great company. That's a company that that's a company that's awesome. I like that. I don't have to agree with everything that they do and every decision that they make. I just have to like the balance sheet. If I'm gonna buy a stock in a company, I just gotta like the numbers. Look at the profit, consider the trajectory of where the business will go. Look at the market cap. If the market cap is a good multiple of what you think that the business is worth, buy it. Buy some stock. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Cifras, how do I get my beard to look so healthy? I don't know. I, I've always grown facial hair super fast. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate that. What about Microsoft or Xbox? I don't know. I don't play Xbox. Microsoft is a good stock, pays a dividend. I, I don't have any Microsoft stock. Do you sleep during the day sometimes? Do you sleep during the day? Sometimes. The other day I slept during the day. I was exhausted. Elizabeth, would you ever meet fans? Yeah, why not? I've met pe I've met people that I've connected with on the channel for sure. Yeah, why not? I don't care. As long as you don't stab me or or, or, hit, or hit me with something or, or Bill Cosby me, then I'm good. Yeah, I don't care. I, people, are, people are people. People that follow the channel are cool as hell. 
I don't want to meet everybody, but yeah, I would meet people. I don't care. Why not? Steph says, do you use E-Trade? Yeah, I do use E-Trade. I like, I like E-Trade. Trades are free. I like the platform. I used to have Capital One, Capital One Investing. Um, it was really simple. The trades were super cheap, and then they got bought by E-Trade. So now I have E-Trade again. I used to have E-Trade way back in the day. They're asking because your name is Take Naps. Yeah, I get it. Bill Cosby. Yes or no, would you invest in a company if it euthanized puppies as long as the balance sheet is good? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know. No, probably not. No, I don't know. Probably not. Why are they euthanizing puppies? I mean, are they, do they just wake up in the morning and just murder puppies? I mean, if that was the case, then no. If they were euthanizing puppies because the puppies were gonna die, then, or they were sick, then, I don't know. I mean, that's a weird question. I understand what you're getting at, but like, no, there's some, there, there are some, there are some, mor there are some like morality, like there are some morality factors that go into what you invest in, but as long as it's not egregious like that, like murdering, I mean, that's insane. No, who murders puppies? Thank you, Cifras. Thanks, man. So like one stock, one stock that I don't invest in is, um, I used to have stock in Alibaba and then I found out that, it, that it was like part, like partly, if not significantly owned by elements of that government. And I was like, I don't want to support this. So I cashed out of my Alibaba position and I put my, put my money elsewhere. Um, I, there's another stock that I have been on the fence about for a long time that I have not invested in, that I really thought about investing in, but I just ultimately decided I just didn't want to. Doesn't mean that I won't, but it was like, it's this debate where you're like, you do want to contribute back to like, you know, to like things that you would consider to be not good. There's a company called Altria and I'm not shaming anybody that invests in Altria. I get it. Altria is an American corporation and one of the largest producers and marketers of tobacco and cigarette products. It's located in Virginia. They do $25 billion a year in revenue and they pay a nearly 8% dividend. The dividend yield is 7.93%, which is a huge dividend. It's literally like one of the largest dividends I've ever seen um, on any stock, 7.93%. That's pretty significant. That means on every $100 annually, you make $7.93 a year. That's a lot. So a 7.93% dividend yield from a company like Altria is really greasy. So it's just like, oh my God. So if you had $100,000 and you put $100,000 into Altria stock, you would make $7,900 a month or a year. So let me do 100,000 times point 0793. You would make $7,930 a year divided by 12. That's $660 a month in just dividends. Yeah, I know it's Philip Morris, but it's like if you had a hundred grand and you put it in there, you would make $660 a month just on dividends. If you divide that by 30 days, that's $22 a day. You would make $22 a day off $100,000 every day. 365 days a year, $22, $22, $22, $22, just from the dividend yield from Altria. That's greasy. But then it's like on the other side of it, it's like, do I want to invest in a company that promotes tobacco? And it's like, I don't know. I personally don't, but like, I can understand why somebody would. And I can understand how they would. To me, it seems evil, but at the same time, it's like, where do you draw the line, you know? I don't know. I don't have any Altria stock, but I, I must admit that a 7.93% dividend yield is really significant. And here's the thing. I've never seen a person buy a, I've never seen somebody force somebody to buy a cigarette. You know, everybody that I know that buys a cigarette buys the cigarette with their own free will. The fact that it's bad for them, that's their decision. Some people love cigarettes. 
so it's like yes it kills them but like in theory lots of lots of things kill people so it's just like where do you draw the line about what you invest in you know so it's like okay it's like uh the book of faces like bans donnie you know it's like do i okay now what do i do what do i do i don't know so it's like you got to figure out how to you got to figure out how to navigate that world and do i know right now no i got to admit it's it's it is certainly enticing to think that you could invest in Altria and make eight points a year. I mean, that's, you know, if you had like a million dollars, if you had $10 million, let's just say you had $10 million. You have 10 million bucks, 10 million. You buy $10 million worth of Altria stock. $10 million times 0 0.0793. That's 793 thousand dollars a year divided by 12 months that's 66 grand a month divided by 30 days that's two thousand two hundred and two dollars a day 2200 bucks a day by just buying the stock you know 2200 bucks a day a day it's like if I had ten million dollars, I could be like, "All right, I take the ten million, I buy Altria stock, I never work a day for the rest of my fucking life." You know? So it's like I get it. I mean, there's other stocks that you can buy, there's other dividends, there's other investments you can make, and like ten that ten million dollars of one stock is crazy. But at the same time, not if you have you know not if you have a hundred million dollars. So the point is, is that like these are the types of things that you got to figure out. Yeah, everybody keeps talking about Trump stakes. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. Invest in, you can't, how do you invest in Trump stakes? I don't even know what you're talking about. Everybody's yelling about stakes. I'm out of water for the second or third time. Let me get some more water. Big E. Where's the big eight? You must be a man. All right. Yo, Cyfrez, or whatever your name is, please don't use language like that in the chat. I don't want that. I don't want that in the chat. I don't want that in the chat, dude. Bobby Sauce, think about investing in a urinal. All right. <laughs> What about vitamin water with dividends of 15% but you find out there aren't vitamins and they kill cat? What? I don't even know what you're talking about. Steph says, how do you feel about investing in real estate in Florida? My house has tripled in value since I bought it eight years ago in Florida. Tripled. An empty lot, an empty lot just sold across the street from my house like yesterday for three, for, or like last week for $315,000 for an empty lot. I mean, I live in a nice neighborhood, but it's not like that nice of a neighborhood. So I would say I can't tell you what to, I mean, listen, it's like, should you invest in Florida real estate? Florida is a huge state. Florida is one of the largest states in the United States. So, I would say, yeah, I mean, real estate in Florida is only gonna get better, I think. 
but I mean, I'm not, it depends where you buy it and if it's right. Jen is a, Jen, Jen Lee in the chat here, Jen is a real estate agent in Arizona. Ask her. I would say that the answer is probably yes. Real estate tends to retain its value in the long term. So yeah, it just depends. But I would say, yeah, Florida's, if, if anything is going to go in this direction, if anything's going to go in the direction, Florida is going to go up in value. There's no doubt about that. So I would say like Florida is going to go up. My, I feel very confident in the value of my house. Here's the shitty part about it though. I don't want to live in my house for the rest of my life. I like my house, but it's not the best house. Like I would love another bedroom. I would love another bathroom. You know, I would love a garage. I don't have a garage. I have a carport in Florida. You don't need a garage because who gives a shit, but it would be sick to have a garage. You could put things in there and lock them, right? Like I could put a bicycle in there and stuff like that. Like my bike is in the shed in the back. So it's like, I would love, I would love for the bike to be in the front, right? Be in the garage. I don't have a garage. So I'd love to buy a house that has a garage. So as my house goes up in value, let's say my house goes up 20%. Well, every other house, every other house in town went up 20%, you know? So it's kind of like, fuck. So it's like, it all ends up evening out at the end of the day. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Appreciate it. I drove all the way from Boston to West Palm. Took four hours from entry at Jacksonville. Uh, I don't think it's... Yo, you guys are going nuts with these Trump steaks. It's so stupid. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It's like steaks and steaks. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting trolled. I see. People are trolling me. <laughs> yeah, troll it up. Troll it up. Somebody made an account called Uncle Bobby Sausalito. <laughs> Yo, who hurt you, dog? Who hurt you, fam? Somebody must have. Imagine your imagine your imagine your Saturday night being so beat. That you make, that you make an account to troll me. That's so funny. It's like, again, like, who hurt you, dog? I find that very funny. I love haters. Keep hating on me. Make a hundred accounts. Make a hundred accounts on me. Go ahead. I could care less. Yeah, they're just like in the chat on Saturday night, like thinking they're thinking they're thinking they're burning me. It's like okay. Uh. Holy shit! That's one in the morning. I've been on here since nine thirty. That's a long live stream, Pop. I'm watching Mud on Netflix drunk and scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> uh, yeah, troll it up. I don't care. Troll it up. Troll it up. John Kerr. Um The only thing that I see as a downfall of the downfall of the long term of the long live streams is that when I repost them to my story, people look at them and they're like, this is four hours long, like I'm not gonna watch this. So the first hour where I was like really, really shredding it, like going hard, gets like devalued by the fact that the conversation drags out for a really Excuse me for a really long time. So it's like, it's kind of like a double edged sword. It's like, I love being on here long term and it's cool. And like, and like, obviously, obviously the longer I'm on, it's like the more content there is and like more people end up contributing, like more people donate and stuff. And it's not about the donations, but it's like the long term ones kind of devalue 
it kind of like scares people away because they're like, I don't want to watch something for two hours or three hours or whatever. So, but anyways, um, all right, yo, it's, so it's one in the morning. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to retire from this live stream. Thank you guys for spending your Saturday night with your boy Sasalado. I do, I do appreciate it. I want to thank the 43 people that bought badges in the chat. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for buying those badges. That's awesome. I did not know that was a thing. So I appreciate that so much. So I'm just going to do a little quick rundown of all the people that are in here. I want to just ho holler out, give a shout out to all the people that left me, that, that bought badges. Kathy, Memi Self, Sean, Elizabeth, Melissa430, Chula Walker, Mrs. Daryl Russell, Nikki Bella Lee, Rebellious Arab Girl, Laura Duville, Susan D. Clark, thank you so much. Jen Lisa 80, Core Carpentry, Kelly Cagle, Britt C. Wolf, Tao Bodybuilding, Yessi Bird, Bobby C. Wolfie, Rocksteady, Panther 81, thank you so much. Lindsay Muccio, Heather Jean, Tanya, Big Ryan, A Mark Life, Jillian Kelly, Shabba Teresa, Michelle Showmaker, Jessica, Paula Sells Homes, Lindsay again, Heather Jean, Tanya, Ryan Big Ray. Oh, I didn't know you could buy multiple. Wow, so people were buying them multiple times? Wow, you guys are amazing. Or maybe it's just making me st scroll endlessly. Or maybe, I don't know, this is, it's weird. Holly, R. Johns, Tawny Rocks, Jenna Rose, Marissa Thompson, Molly Laporta, Alicia, Miss Carrie Hoover, the Megan, Holly. I don't know, this thing is weird. It's like, it's weird. It like shows me all these different ones and I don't know if it's like f pushing me through an endless loop. But thank you guys so much. Um, <laughs> so said all the ladies. Most of the most of the donations that I receive on the live streams have been uh, have been have been from the females. They have been much more <laughs> much more generous. I don't know why, but I appreciate. It. Actually, the majority a majority of the people that follow my account are female. It's like sixty five thirty five. So that would make sense, anyways, just based on the breakdown of um, of the gender of the people that follow the account. Maybe it's because I'm dashing. I don't know. Um, maybe they just know what's up, but. Not to devalue the dudes, the dudes have contributed quite a bit as well. Yo, thank you so much. Follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Bobby Sausalito. Join the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash We Take Naps, I believe it is. Um, all the links are on bobbysausalito.com. Follow, buy merch on bobbysauce.com if you want. Use coupon code Amish, 12% off if you want to slide that through. Um, Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for being being part of it. I appreciate it so much. And um, thank you to the 45 people that bought the badge. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for the Venmos. I also got a couple of Venmos. I'll give them a shout out as well. Jessica Strauss on Venmo, Daily Martin, Molly Laporta, and Ariana Tiello. Thank you guys so much for the donations on Venmo. Um, somebody did a cash app as well. Somebody requested money from me on Cash App. <laughs> ah, so they're like, I follow you on Instagram. Pay me three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, no, I'm not gonna pay you three hundred dollars, but that's that funny. But yo, thank you guys so much. Thanks for the badges. Thanks for the donations. You guys are the best. I appreciate you so much. Share the account. Send it to your friends. Follow along. You guys are the best. I love you, hope you had a good night, hope you had a fun time. Share my account with your friends. Pass it around. You guys are cool. Thanks so much, fight for freedom. Fight for America. Don't watch the mainstream media. See ya soon. I'll probably see you tomorrow. I'll probably do a live stream tomorrow. All right, peace!